hey, just about here. I got to come in for a quick interruption and let it be known that we were definitely trying to do a random take on this one. And it came in and it was like way too hot. We had to just keep going. You already clicked on this. You already know what's going on. So grab your 16 ounce beer. Grab your 16 ounce monster. Crack that thing open. Get your liquid death open. Sit back and relax. We got two hours of eye casts coming up. The intro is going to be a little weird, but you'll get there. We'll get there. Just hang in for it. You'll figure out where the turn happens. It's a good one. How's it going, friends and family of the internet? Welcome to the Real AF TV podcast, the show about fishing and random takes from the land of 10,000 lakes. I'm one of your hosts, Josh the Bar. And I'm a host as well. I never know how to do these things. <laughs> My name is Tim Wagner, and a host I is. Two. <laughs> two, year, two years in, dude, and it's just like, <laughs> and me too. And, and I'm also, here. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> if you're new to the podcast, I'm sort of the geeky guy that doesn't know too much about fishing, but I love me some fishing, and Tim is the fisherman, and we are going to talk about iCast, and if you don't know what iCast, then it's crazy that you clicked on this podcast, but I'm glad you found us. Hang in there, because yeah. you're in for a ride in the second half because this is the show about fishing and random takes so when the fishing topic it's iCast and in the random take the second half of the podcast we are going to talk about cartoons i kept it very vague Ooh, I like and just, we're just going to be do some goofing because that's what the random take is about uh, yep. me and tim goofing around. <laughs> you want to get to know us do some goofing do some goofing <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know this is a podcast that drops every other monday and on our off week on Wednesdays, we drop the fishing topic, split out all by itself over on YouTube, and we drop the random takes, split out all by itself over on YouTube. <laughs> We're on YouTube. We make videos. Tim had a sweet crappy spawn video here. It was 2021 crappy spawn, but we dropped it here in 2022, yep. timely. And it's timeless. <laughs> it will it will work for 2022 i promise you can You're watch right. it yes and yes. do exactly the same thing year after yes. year after year after year yes you're like and what i meant by timely oh, no ahead, i know Tim. i know oh. i was just saying yeah you like my change a little so things might change on your leg but no i get it i was just making sure that they were just like whoa what if you know if you are a beginner and you're like that's the 2021 that's old stuff what do you do this year to catch them Right. Same shit as last year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that is exactly why we didn't put a year on it. I'm just letting you all know um, the production side of it, right? Tim goes out, he films it during the crappy spawn. He gets it over to me, production, editing, all this stuff. It's not crappy spawn anymore by the time I get it. Right. It's bass water top. It's top water bass fishing time by the time I'm done with the edit. And <laughs> it just makes sense to wait a year and drop it. So <laughs> that's what we did. So. We typically do the podcast, kicking it off with fishing news. You miss that if you do the split topic. This time, you're not going to miss it because we're just jumping straight in. The fishing news is the fishing news because it was iCast. If you don't know what iCast is, iCast is the big fishing show of the year down in Orlando, Florida. All the new shit gets shown off. People out there flexing, showing it. Showing their shit off, and it's so fucking fun to watch, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> we right. didn't talk about it last year. I learned about it for the first time last year, actually. So I didn't dive into it. This year, splash, baby. Splash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big old time. Yeah. And this, So let's I, just, I Tim. Mean, what, a, what a year to get into it. I mean, if mm. you, like... There was a lot of good new stuff. It was crazy how many different manufacturers moved into lanes that they've never been into before. For me, at least, Ooh. I was like, what, Ooh. what, what? <laughs> I did that a bunch where normally I'm like, oh, that's pretty dope. Oh, that's pretty dope. You know, like, or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're like, we came out with a new size or we came out with something that dives to a new depth. And it's like the same lure that they've always had. And you're like, oh, cool. Mm -hmm. I like that still. You know, I'm always excited, yeah. but this time it was like lure after lure in different lanes from different people that have never made them before and just stuff where mm -hmm. I'm just like, holy shit. 
<laughs> I, dude. Hell yes, dude. I was like, man, this iCast is going to, oh, they are going to cost me some money in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that too. I was like, oh, damn, I want that. And then, <laughs> so shout out to Tackle Warehouse. I'd be watching it and then be like, oh, yeah. It's soon available for pre order on Tackle Warehouse. And I was like, I'm about to shoot over to Tackle Warehouse right now in the middle of this fucking code that I'm writing. <laughs> right. right. I, was, I was listening to it like a podcast at work. And then I was just like, yeah. Okay. I think it's time to take a 15 minute break and go to Tackle right. Warehouse. <laughs> yeah. They almost <laughs> got they They almost got me. But because of like future or future, like past knowledge of what i've done mm -hmm. like oh big order would be dope but it's gonna come to winter and i'm gonna want to start getting like ice fishing stuff and i'm gonna be like but i have all this stuff tied up like money tied up and things i can't right. use till spring <laughs> and then i'm just like i will find it when it comes out in springtime <laughs> right right <laughs> yes good point and oh shit Tim, I forgot what? to do housekeeping, but also oh. episode 50, dude, the big 5-0. Woo! -hoo. Yeah. The big 5-0. Big 5-0, man. I just man. had to give I had to high five ourselves for that one. I'm fucking <laughs> super proud of that. But Should've uh got a balloon. I know. Should have got like a fucking over the hill thing or something. Oh wait, that's 40. What is it when you're 50? Death mm. is coming. <laughs> right. Some other corny <laughs> joke about over the hill. Right. When you're 40, you're over the hill, and now you're just rolling down the river. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Quick housekeeping is this is, a, you know, we're going to talk about Monster Bass and the Real AF TV Patreon and the break in between the two things. If you go to Real AF TV, Real AF dot TV, that's our website. If you go to Real AF dot TV slash contact specifically, send us feedback but if you go to realaf.tv it just connects you with everything that is related to the podcast and the videos and everything like that it'll get you in the right place and also you know what reviews reviews man we could really help you could really help the podcast out by going and just putting in a review quick and dipping out that helps the podcast a ton we could use it thank you for doing that you know like and subscribe that's right <laughs> We would appreciate it. That's right. But back to iCast. So, Tim, I said pre-orders already, and I think that we need to preface this already because some people don't understand shows, trade shows, whatever you want to call this. Is like, I feel like there's a there's a group of people that watch these videos and they're like, I'm gonna go fucking buy it now, and then you wait thirty seconds and it's like coming this spring. Yeah. coming this fall right like there's this there's this delay of like oh oh what right. the fuck that's not for sale you know i think there's that instant feed um mentality of the internet right yeah so do you want to just kind of lay that shit out there quick i mean i think you got to think of it like an auto show i think that's a more relatable thing for a lot of mm -hmm. people where you see For me it's the you, video game stuff but right anyway, yeah go on. right where you see that it's coming out you know what it's gonna be it exists already but you just don't get it yet like it's not ready for mass production right plus there's a certain amount of hype that they got to get around it before they start dropping them because if they just start dropping them everybody's gonna be like what the hell is that <laughs> well, you know right, you right. Gotta, you'll just you see this new thing and you'll just kind of be like lost on it right yeah right and in a day and age of the internet and everything like being everywhere like word of mouth spreads faster than ever but they want mm -hmm. to hit you with all the information and then let you go with word of mouth on that they don't want you to just see it see it and be like have you seen these new things they right. look cool do you know anything about them i do not i just saw them they look cool Right. You know, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. For the sure. iCast has a pro at like every stand. They have everybody there and they're all like pitching their stuff. You know, you if you mm -hmm. go there, it's just like the auto shows where you're walking around and you're able to look at everything and get a peek at it and like really feel it and have like, you know, there's reps that'll come around and talk every once in a while about it. So you can learn everything mm -hmm. you want to learn about it. You just can't have it yet. <laughs> right 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 and uh, yeah the way you, the way that you put it is like an auto show is 
I don't know. I didn't get into this part of iCast of where maybe there's concepts there. Because at, at a car show, you'll see concepts that just aren't like, here's the thing. It exists. We built it, but we're not probably going to manufacture this. It, the majority of the things and what we're going to talk about with iCast are this thing is what you're seeing is the prototype from the manufacturer mold. It's the right. actual thing that came out of the manufacturer, like from the factory. Yes. It is just one of the first 10 to come out of the factory. They are in production right now. You have right. to wait six months until this thing's going to be out to the dealers. Like that's all there is right. to it. Yep. Yeah. And I think there may be like the, that sort of like a, um, uh, God damn it, you just said it. Concept? My brain concept. I don't know why my brain doesn't work. The concept. There might be stuff like that there, but you mm -hmm. never see any of that. You literally only see the stuff that's legit that's going to come out. And that's all at the mm -hmm. auto show, too. You know, it's all the real cars, but they do have the concept cars. I'm guessing there's probably stuff like that at iCast, but you don't mm -hmm. really hear anybody talking about, like, what could be. There might be some stuff. You know, yeah. there might be, like, a reel or something where they're just, like, this is what we've been thinking about. Isn't it cool? But like a concept car where it's like a one off make yep. where it has features gotcha. in it that are never going to make it to actual production because they're just insane. Right. You know, right. like I've seen some concept cars that you look at it and you're just like, that thing is amazing. I saw a Buick like five years ago. That was like a spaceship, dude. The inside was ridiculous. And you're like, that's <laughs> never going to actually come because it was the most impractical thing. Like sure. the inside, like the dash in the middle came back and there was like, it was all four seats were like sectioned off and it was mm -hmm. the most impractical, like dust collecting, like <laughs> on a show floor, it was, it was crazy cool looking, but yeah. in, a, in a practical yeah. setting, you'd be like, yep. that's going to make moving my arm weird. It's going to collect <laughs> dust. If any one fingerprint gets on it, it's going to look like shit. But right now with nobody touching it, yeah, it looks pretty cool. So I'm sure there's <laughs> reels like that where they're just like, sure. isn't this real cool? And you're like, yeah, like where, when I, can I get it? Oh, this one's not real. And if you were to buy it, you know, like this one costed us somewhere in the realm of like $7,000 to buy it. And you'd be like, right, oh, right, to develop. Yeah. Or like, yeah, just in material costs, this thing is seven G's. <laughs> That's right. not counting the engineers and the artists and everything that went into it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I For think sure. because because all fishing stuff is so close, I know all automotive stuff is pretty close too. But I think mm. because all fishing stuff is so close, I think a lot of them like to keep it under wraps until it's done. So I don't even know sure. if there is anything like the concepts. Uh, gotcha. Gotcha. Because it's always sort of just like these increments that lead yeah. to bigger things later, which we'll get into yeah. with, um, but, I believe it was Abu did some pretty big. Oh, yeah. They revamps. overhauled it. Yeah. But when you yeah. hear, I was but, just going to say, like, they definitely always have it in development because almost every single one of the guys that you hear talking about it, they're just be like, this is the new reel. We've had it in development for three years. Oh, right. You know? So right. it's like, OK, yep. so you probably could have yep. hit us with a concept version. Sure, sure. But you didn't, you know? <laughs> yep, yep. Or at or least they, they did. didn't put it on the internet, right? Like right, if you exactly. went to iCast, maybe you could get a little bit behind the scenes. Like, hey, check out what we're working on right now. Here's the general idea and here's what it's probably going to be in. Right. Maybe, maybe. Let's let's actually get into iCast though, dude. And let's it was it. Berkeley for me. Like Berkeley, you oh. sent me all this stuff, just complete production transparency. It was like, Nerd. Tim's like, we got to talk iCast. Watch this just start sending me shit. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's ridiculous. Even up, Basically up until a few hours before this podcast was being recorded, I was watching shit that Tim was sending me. <laughs> and I, the whole time was just like, holy shit, dude, Berkeley is lighting it up. Yeah. For the past two years, for sure. I mean, they've been dropping a lot of good stuff for a long time. But these last two years have been just like off the charts where yeah. they've really started like moving into a different field because the Berkeley always had the power baits and stuff, but that's really all they had okay. for a long time. Okay. And then they started. What is like the power bait? Is that the stinky stuff? Yeah. So it's a stinky that's stuff. Yeah. The smell? Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. You have the, so there's the different scents in the power baits. And then some, they, they started coming out with like the max scent, which was like, I think mm. it says that it's 400 times stronger than 
like some of the other scents. I don't know Jesus. if they're saying like power bait or whatever. I forget. But the anyways, the max scent is powerful. And uh, it's kind of a different bait too. the way the mm-hmm. bait is made. You can see that it's almost like a more organic feel like it's mm. you can tell like, oh, there's like something it absorbs here. the scent more. You think? Yeah, it's there's something here to hold on to that scent a little bit better where the yeah. other power baits are kind of like it looks like your traditional soft plastic, but sure, they sure. stink, you know, so <laughs> right. but but that's kind of where they started moving. And then all of a sudden, like a couple of years ago, I started like noticing they had like crank baits and jerk baits and stuff. And you're like, OK, Berkeley. You know, they've been they've been making the flicker shad for a while, which is a very popular walleye yes. bait. OK. You know, so that was, that one, that's just a pretty normal. Yeah. Jerk the, bait, right? It's a jerk. The, bait. Uh, it's Sorry. kind of. Yeah, it's like a shad style bait. Um, OK, so jerk baits are more of like a stick and this is more of like a shad. So it, I think it's technically kind of like a jerk bait. Yes. But you uh, most of the time they are trolled. Like they're just a steady okay. retrieve behind the boat, gotcha. And they're killers for walleye, man. People love them. But like even the the flicker shed this year, it yeah. came out with a freaking scented version, dude. Yeah, like uh, the hard bait, right? This is hard that hard bait, bait that had yeah. the scent in it. Yeah, how the I've fuck seen, does that even work, dude? <laughs> I've seen some other people with some ideas and stuff, but from the picture, it looks like it just has a bunch of holes on the side, and then you just have a dropper, and you just kind of like bloop bloop bloop. And then when it swims, I'm guessing the water just kind of like moves back and forth and it just kind of like it's like you the fill scent. the bait with scent, you think? Is that what you think's going on? Yeah, dude. I think or at least or at least like put some drops on the outside so it kind of like it, they're like oh, oils. Like I think. that material maybe on the outside and, and we won't know until we get them, right? Because we weren't at I mean, I have everything I have that a, we're saying has been from the yeah. internet. Like we've just been absorbing everything, but like Maybe that material on the outside is absorbent. Yeah, it could be. I on it and it sucks it in. Yeah, and I might I might have to do some research. Maybe I can find what it says. And I'm if you see me as we're going here writing stuff down, I'm trying to keep a list of like when we kind of hit things because I'm going to put these pictures and stuff on Instagram so you can kind of follow along with what we're talking about here if you want to and see what we're talking about because I have a picture of this flicker shad, and on the side of it, it looks like a clear like trench and there's just a bunch of little dots on it it almost like looks like little cups like you just put drops on the outside so i'm not 100 percent sure how it works right but it's it's crazy i i've seen some other ideas and some gimmicks and stuff that they've had uh on you know like the late night tvs this Mm -hmm. bait catches every fish in the ocean and then they like (laughs) cast it out and people are catching it and there's like old ladies that are just like i can't believe it worked and just like (laughs) You cast a jerk bait long enough, you're gonna catch a fish on it. You know, it's right, <laughs> right. not that hard to film a video showing you that you caught one fish on it. <laughs> but those were like I remember they had like blood capsules where it was like a almost like oh. a, a daily vitamin that you like put it in there and it would like biodegrade and then it had like a trail of blood and they're like, Well the fish will chase it or whatever and but the crankbaits were horseshit. Like they focused on the thing and not the actual crankbait themselves. <laughs> the actual bait itself. Yeah, what? and this is so. This is a proven, sick, dope, fucking. This is a bait that catches fish, man. Yes, it's a and bait. And now that they added scent fish. to it somehow. Yeah, it looks. And I think I think that it, it will actually work because I haven't seen a lot of videos where there's like walleye stocking their stuff, but you can find a re- relatively good amount of videos out there where there's like a, a pike. Like mm-hmm. uh, stalking its prey as they're trolling, oh. it's sitting there, and the pike's kind of stalking it, and it might not be biting because there must be like a GoPro mounted pretty close to it. So they're like, I don't know if I should <laughs> eat this. There's a fucking GoPro right, right there. Yeah, but they end up biting it. But I would think that like with that scent, that they come close and they're thinking about it, that would help persuade them in the right direction. I'm a big guy for yeah. scent. Like I've always, yeah, I fish pretty clear water, so everything that gives me an edge. And fishing is all about confidence. So having that confidence, knowing that if that fish picks it up, even the scent, I think kind of like, you know, scent and taste are kind of tied into each other. So if you eat sure, sure. something that has some scent to it, I think that you maybe hold on to it a little bit longer. Now, when you're trolling sure. crankbaits, that doesn't really matter much. I think you're just trying to get them to bite it and stuff. But with soft plastics and stuff, when I know that it has a scent, I feel a lot better about throwing it because I feel like if it picks it up, I have a little bit of extra time to 
you know, set the hook or know, like, if I mm. didn't feel the bite, he'll hold mm. on to it longer. Or she'll hold on to it longer. Don't come at me, internet. But <laughs> 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 but hopefully they hold on to that bait a little bit longer. Yeah. And I'm yeah, able yeah. to, you know, set the hook. And right, get right. And I it. wonder what, like, it, with this with this being s- sort of, like, you called the flicker shad basically like a good troll and walleye bait, right? Like, yeah. I wonder it's a if kill, the, yeah. On this, the, the scent on the scent would draw them in from further away. Like you'd have better chances of just drawing them in. Cause if you're trolling and you're leaving this trail of scent behind you, I wonder if you have a better chance of just pulling fish from places you wouldn't typically pull them from because now right. it's not yeah. just the sound. I mean, it's not just the visual. Like there's a literal scent you're spreading yeah. throughout the water. And it's, and it's definitely a possibility. And sometimes when you're trolling, depending on the lake and stuff, there's a certain spot, you know, like a certain drop off or Mm-hmm. A saddle, mm-hmm. which is like, you know, there's two points and in between the two points, it kind of comes down in the middle and it literally kind of makes what looks like a, a saddle. Mm-hmm. So sure. sometimes people just like kind of troll a saddle and like a figure eight or whatever. If you okay. keep trolling those same spots, it's almost like chumming the water, I would think. You know, you're kind of getting yeah, these fish but... riled up like where mm-hmm. they might not right be interested, but they keep smelling it, you know, like you're at Home Depot or whatever, and you're just kind of like, you just go, gosh, dang it, what is that smell? And then you come out and there's the restaurant there and you're like, I I didn't plan on eating out, but I'm, I think I'm going to go over there. You know, (laughs) your Home Depots always get put next to restaurants because goddamn, we live in two completely different cities and it's the same situation. Oh, for sure. We're not a Home Depot. Like, yeah. Our, Mm. ours. Yeah. Place. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Here in St. Cloud, there's like a, literally a Texas Roadhouse that shares the parking. There's a Texas Roadhouse, a Grizzlies. Our shares the parking lot of the restaurant too. Yeah, what the fuck? There's a, there's a Texas Roadhouse, a Grizzlies, and an IHOP that are all technically like in the same parking lot. You don't even need to get <laughs> out of the road. You just like, there. <laughs> so we got three of them right there where you're just like, gosh, dang. That Whether you're ready for good. dinner, you're super hungover, or you just want a snack. They got yeah. you covered. <laughs> What Any are you time trying of day, to, yeah. What are you, you trying come out to get out here? People, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. There, now, there, Tim, there. I don't know if you have any more on that scented shit because that looks cool as hell. But I have the next note down that's sort of related to because they have this new clicker and I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. Well, what hey. are they doing with this clicker? Because that's what they called it, like literally a clicker. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Ah oh, shit. Yeah. The the Berkeley. Yes, let's stick Berkeley. That makes sense. Yes. I was like, I'm I'm talking about sense and I'm talking about Berkeley. We could go either way. You're talking you brought it up. Let's talk about it. Yes. Berkeley. The the clicker. So what they had there is and other people have done stuff like this. So I'm I'm excited about mm-hmm. what this would look like because it's a different style of uh crankbait. And also, um they didn't I don't know if they still make them anymore, but like Rapala had a couple of their baits and they called them uh clack and minnows. And they actually had like a, a little metal tube. I'm not going to say what kind of metal cause I'm not hundred percent sure. So I'm just going to mm-hmm. say a metal tube and that metal tube was actually exposed to the outside and there's a ball bearing in there oh. and it was super aggressive. Like, Tick, 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 like very loud. Yeah, you know, I bet that's it was. What, yeah, that's what they called it, the clacking and stuff. And uh, on certain, you know, like when it's hot out, uh, mm-hmm. shit, I don't know if you can hear that. Sorry, I got on my phone. No, no, you're good. I got the power cord next to my headphone cord, and I was like, oh, <laughs> it sounds shitty. Um, The clacking minnow was very, it's a very aggressive sound. Yeah. So in dirty water and stuff, with uh, stuff is ha- having a hard time finding the bait and stuff. Oh. Or when it's hot, when you're when you're trying to fish really aggressive, yep. and when you're trying to you know help fish find your baits in dingy or dirty water, like in the clear water, I'm not messing with a clacking minnow. Maybe you guys out there have had some mm-hmm. success. If you had, let us know. That's awesome. Yeah. I like real. to try to keep it more silent when it's uh, in the clear water. I just don't have good luck when I'm making visual. a lot of noise. Yeah. Just mm-hmm, the visual mm-hmm. alone, I think the clacking like scares them off. Like they're like, it's not supposed to be doing that, but right. for some reason, in the dirtier water, like it helps them find it, and they don't care. 
It's right. like, you know, they, they kind of where they're not relying on their visual so much. They're just like noise, bam. right? Noise sure. and vibration and they feel it and they hear it and they come out. And sometimes I think it just pisses them off. I was fishing actually with <laughs> piss me off. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes came flying by my house. I was, like, what the fuck? I was fishing, uh, with our buddy, Sam again, mm-hmm. uh, shout out Sam, bringing him up yeah. all the time, but we were all fishing. What up, Sam? And it was a it was a gnarly hot day, like calm, no wind, and we were fishing um off the dock. His dad had rented a cabin mm-hmm. um on a chain of lakes that is known for like smallmouth and stuff, and we were casting all sorts of stuff, and I was like, mm-hmm. Let me let me try this clacking minnow, see if I can piss him off or whatever, and I throw it out there and I caught like a four pounder off the dock. Oh shit. And and it was right in the weeds, like right next to us the whole time. Really? And then it just took that minnow to piss him off to actually like, or, you know, to get him, yeah. to get his to get attention. It, draw it, draw it out of the weeds and yeah. snap. Yeah. Whatever, whatever it was with that minnow got him going. So, and I don't know if they still make that anymore. So this here, um, has a different chamber in it. I had it pulled up and I don't yeah, know this Berkeley one is, it's still, it, is it like a flicker? Sh- is it like a shad? No. So it's a different, it's a different crankbait. So okay, the the Fritz side is kind of like a uh, a flatter sided um, crankbait. It works okay. in a little bit uh, colder water and stuff. It's a little bit tighter wiggle. I mm, have some okay. of the Fritz sides um, crankbaits, and they're they're pretty dope. Um, okay, but yeah, like this application to have this louder, like to to be able to have this vi- higher faster vibration i know earlier i was talking about like hotter water but sometimes like when you're just talking about like that was just a you know a possibility Mm -hmm. when you have like really dingy water those fish are still there when it's cold you know so like to have that dirtier stained water to have them another bait to help maybe get their attention i think it'll be really good um like in the spawning time or after oh, really? the spawn where they're up there. Yeah, because like the spawning. So what is think, it about this clicker that makes it like different that you think it's going to be good for that sort of thing? I, it's just that, a, that, like in the spawn, I guess. So it's uh, it's just a more, um, it says with a low pitched clicking sound for big fish attraction in stained mm. to dirty water conditions. There you go. I didn't read that until just now. I was trying to figure out like what the <laughs> so, so exactly what I'm saying is what they yeah, they plan on right using it for. Berkeley, sure. Yeah. So that that clicking is just more of a more of an attractant. And I think like when you're trying to fish like spawning bass and stuff, and they're up there, mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. think sometimes they're necessarily. I, I shouldn't say sometimes. A lot of times, like the big females and stuff are up there, and they don't care about eating so much as the spawn is going on. And the males mm-hmm. that are protecting the bed also same boat. They have a mission, and it's not eating, you know. So, right. <laughs> and it's protecting. when you're casting it past those beds and stuff, they might not be paying attention. But when that aggressive click comes by, I, you mm-hmm. know, it might piss them off. They're just like, mm-hmm. "You don't wake my babies," you know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll come eat it. But like, I just like the idea of being able to cast like a crankbait. You know, being able to cover a lot of water because bass will normally not spawn next like within eyesight of each other like the, oh, okay. the males if they can see each other they normally won't spawn there so they're spread okay. out pretty well you know if you get like a mm-hmm. log or whatever they might be close because they're stupid because the, they're on one side of the log the other and they yeah, don't really see yeah. each other right yeah they might see each other if they come out and they're just like hey what are you doing here i gotta get back to my bed you know or whatever but when you're you want to cast you know cover a lot of water especially some of those big girls are out there just roaming mm-hmm. you know they're trying mm-hmm. to find a suitor they're in the shallows and they're mm-hmm. they're just going from spot to spot trying to find mm-hmm. a potential suitor you know right. so when you're Good covering bait. a lot of water with a crankbait mm-hmm. and making sure that they're you know getting their attention i just i think it'll work well who knows you know i just get excited yeah. about new stuff Sometimes yeah, yeah, like yeah, the clacking sure, minnow, sure. it works in some circumstances. And then other times like it's there for a while and you never see it again. <laughs> but sometimes, <laughs> it, sometimes it yeah, works yeah, really yeah. well. And then it, it becomes a staple of a lot of fishermen's, you know, tackle boxes. 
Yeah. And you said that Rapala one that you had fished and it had worked for you on that was external. This is internal, right? Like the graphic was a little yes. hard for me to distinguish yeah, without no. looking into it. Right. Yeah. The graphic is, it makes it look external, but they just did like a, yeah, a like what you were saying. Like yeah. It makes it look like, yes, exactly. Actually, okay. where you can see into the bait. Okay. But yeah, this is, this is internal and it's got, you know, a hard plastic side. So the noise comes out fine. But that yeah, other yeah, yeah. one was external, had like an actual metal tube in there. I think I still right. have some. I don't know. I this thing's going to click. Well. I mean, just hard. Yeah. The hard exterior. It's going to, it's going to flick. That, yep. That's cool. Um, do you sure. want to go to soft baits or do you want to go up to the, the slobber knocker? Do you want to go back to soft that's... baits quick or you want to go to that slobber knocker? Well, let's let's go to the slobber knocker because we're talking okay. we're talking about um, the uh, Berkeley's hard baits. So yeah, we'll just keep going. You just know? keep on <laughs> keep on the hard baits then, because yeah, yeah, all I all I have down for my note is what's with the slobber knocker? This thing's not a spinner bait. Like, what is it? So that is uh, what are they? I think it's technically called like a bladed jig. Okay. So everybody calls them chatterbaits. You know how like everybody oh. calls a facial tissue a Kleenex? Right. Chatterbait was made by Z-Man. Okay. So Z-Man is the originator of the chatterbait. Everybody calls these things chatterbaits, but I think technically you call them a bladed jig. Gotcha. And gotcha. So, so Z-Man's been making these for a while. Z-Man has a bunch of different kinds, but the uniqueness of this one is the way the blade is actually attached to the head. No. Oh, okay. So in the Z-Man's and all the other chatterbaits, because there's a bunch of different ones, uh, Guggen Squad makes one that probably has my favorite name of any of them because of the way the t line tied is weighed made and because Guggen is like a YouTube internet thing that blew up yeah. and now is like a legit bait company. Right. It's called a clickbait. <laughs> so it's, it's, yeah, dude. it's, a, it's a very well marketed. I've heard, you know, mixed reviews, but you get okay. mixed reviews on everything where they're just like, that thing right. doesn't work. Well, maybe it doesn't work for your legs. So just relax. Like, right, right, right. I, I hate it when people are like, this thing doesn't catch shit. What do you fish? One lake? That's probably not the bait that works west on that right. lake. Right. And what do you do? Just... Take it out one time, too? That doesn't count. Like, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, the slobber knocker. Yeah. So, the slobber knocker, all of the other ones have, you know, how a, a jig has a jig head and then there's like a hole to tie the line to, right? Okay. So the it's other like a bladed, weight with a, but it's got a hook on it. Right. Yes, exactly. So there's, a, there's a weighted head in the front with a hook yeah. that comes out the back. And in that weighted head, it's like a ball of weight. And again, I'll put this on Instagram so you can see this, but there's a ball of weight that has a line tie. So there's just a hole that you can put a line in on a normal jig. Well, a bladed jig takes that line tie and they put a blade on it. So it's a metal piece that's attached to it. And then it's a blade and the, and this blade, there's many different kinds now because everybody's trying to do something a little bit different. Sure. And it's like, um, I don't know. It's, uh, like a baseball diamond shape oh. almost, okay. you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Like, yeah, it's like, it's four sides and you don't want to call it a square. Well, it's not, no, it's not four sides. It's, it's five, I think. Oh, okay. Cause, or maybe it's even six. Yeah, it's six. Okay. So it's a hexagon. Because yeah, so it's a hexagon, but it's kind of a weird shaped hexagon. Oh, okay. Like so, it, not all sides are it, even. Almost almost like a coffin. Almost like a, a little metal oh. coffin. But like a little bit fatter than a coffin. Not yeah, as yeah, long. Yeah, like your typical fucking vampire coffin. Yeah. They just made it into a blade, right? Right. Exactly. Saying? Yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah. Okay. But I maybe 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 sh yeah, maybe shorten it up a little bit, you know, not long like a coffin, but that okay. kind of shape if you if you compressed it. Yeah. Like if you had a JPEG file that loaded weird on your phone you're like oh that's right kind of short and fat <laughs> you're like why is that jpeg all fucking stretched out and weird looking yeah oh it's size two my phone not four my phone okay. exactly so <laughs> so they have that's the original z-man had that 
and a lot of the other baits have that too. Z-Man has a bunch of different... Z-Man has a high price point, very nice component, one called a jackhammer that sells for like 19 bucks a pop. Mm. This one is also not very cheap. I think it's like thirteen ninety nine is what it's selling for. But instead of all these ones that are hooked up on that thing, and this is the Z Man. We're not to the Berkeley yet, right? Right, right. Yeah, because the Berkeley still pre orders it. Shit, next year. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're saying for thirteen ninety nine is retail. I'm sure you're not going to get it on sale when it first comes out. They don't do that shit, you know. None of them are like get your hands on the very brand new thing for cheap. They're like. Right. Everybody's going to f- play full price, especially when it's the right. eye cast hard bait winner of the year that that oh. took home right. the prize. It's another thing that we didn't talk about, but they do have awards for all sorts yeah. of different categories. Right. Which is almost what I watched. <laughs> totally. Right, so right. the slobber knocker yeah. got the hard bait of the of the show. Yes. Slobber oh, okay. is the hard bait, uh, hard bait, freshwater hard of bait, the year. Right. Yep. Sick. Because they have they have everything here. It's not you know, especially right. since it's in Orlando, you're dealing with both sides of the, you know, right. Fish the salt world. and fresh water for sure. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. The brackish waters, <laughs> the <laughs> and brackish waters, right? <laughs> <laughs> but so the, yeah, what is it about this thing? So the the blade is hooked on to that piece, um, that uh, the jig. Like eyelet, the, jig. the eyelet on the jig is what it's referred to. It's hooked onto the eyelet with like a piece of metal. And it's almost like a loop that goes to this other blade. This, hmm. this one has a bar that like the blade itself almost opens up. What? It's hard to explain. Like the bar goes through the eyelet. So instead of, oh. so instead of this metal piece, like, being an extension to the blade the blade's almost like part of the head really yeah and the thing that's super cool about that is one i'm guessing it probably makes like a little bit of a click too with the vibration and stuff okay but two because there's no separation between the jig head and that blade Mm -hmm. it goes through cover super nice there's no spots of it getting hung up the blade and the head are like one piece and it just kind of bounces off stuff instead of having that head or the blade like parts of like weeds and stuff that can get hung up in there yeah yeah, check it out on instagram you'll be able to see the difference i might even put it up with like a z-man chatterbait so you can see the difference oh of what i'm talking about yeah 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 yeah. i think that'll be the best like follow along you know while you're watching here i'm making (laughs) Making notes, <laughs> right, right, so right. I'm making sure that I'm putting them in the right order and stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 No. Great idea. Great idea. And I, I love as in great idea with the Instagram thing. If you're if we're good with the slobber knocker, yeah, I want to bring it because sure. I thought it was a spinner bait, and I was like, wait, it's not a spinner bait. But now Berkeley's is doing spinner baits. <laughs> yes. So Berkeley is doing spinner baits. That's another crazy thing, and the the. The and that's new for them. Like this is yeah. first, like this is 2023, right. I'm guessing they're dropping and the, them. And the slobber knocker is fished in a lot of the same spots as a spinner bait. So you can fish it the same way. The The nice thing about that bladed jig is you can kind of like, now you mm. can slow roll it and you can actually work like a jig sometimes if you want to, okay. but it's kind of, you can do stuff with the spinner bait too. Anyways, they're fished very similarly, but yes, they started doing spinner baits now. They never Jeez. had spinner baits before and they started coming out with spinner baits and they look dope. They look really cool. And Spro, since we're talking about new companies to spinner oh, yeah, baits, yeah, yeah. Spro makes what's spinner baits too now. That's why I'm like, oh, all these people are just like going into these different avenues. Oh, and you have like these people that are moving into different lanes they haven't been in before. So spinner baits are pretty cool. There's not a lot of different brands out there to mm-hmm. move into. There are, but some of them you need to go to like specialty websites to find them. They don't have everything everywhere, you know? So, okay. Um, now like having Berkeley come out with some of this stuff, I'm excited about cause you're going to be able to find it everywhere. Probably Walmart carries a lot of different Berkeley stuff. So gotcha. like in a mm-hmm, pinch, mm-hmm. you can probably find what you need. So I'm, that's why I'm so excited about like one of the biggest companies out there. 
sure. moving into these different avenues. And Spro has always yeah. been a favorite of mine. Spro is a yeah, I didn't even um, I didn't even know what Spro was. This was my first experience. I was like, oh, Spro? yeah, what's up with them? <laughs> that, that, yeah. That's my note. What's up with Spro USA? Spro's got Spro's got two different baits that I've used a lot. They're they make really good frogs, so a lot of people know about Spro's frogs. And then oh, they have okay. a crankbait called the Little John, and the Little John's pretty popular as well. That's one of those kind of like high end crankbaits where they okay. cost a little bit more, but they're worth paying for it, you know. So mm -hmm. sure, sure. Um, but yeah, Spro's Spro's been a good bait company for a long time. So to see them you know, really start taking off, you know, I feel like they've never really had a large selection of anything. And all of a sudden they're just like, whoa, whole new bait category. You're like, oh <laughs> shit, dopes, bro. Nice. Yeah. So That's I was, sick. I was super excited about that. Not much to really say about, um, spinner baits. It's just cool to see both of these companies going into that, to have all these different options because sure there are so many different blade combinations and colors and stuff. It's cool to see yeah. other people moving into these avenues, you know, cause there's, yeah, for sure. There's like, that's the shit that gets you hyped as a, like as a true right. fisherman, you're just like, yeah. Oh, Oh, there's going to be more options now. That's what this yes. means because it means it, that they're moving into this space because they saw a void or they're moving to right. the space because they had an idea. Like it's yeah. not going to be the same shit recreated because it's already being done. Why would you do that? Right. Right. Yeah. And, and maybe we'll, uh, you know, have that as a topic in the future, even where we'll just talk mm -hmm. about spinner baits. Oh yeah. Cause there's a, there's different blade shapes. There's different, uh, ways that the blades are fastened the the actual design of the the spinner bait is different so like there's oh, there's a wow. whole bunch of different stuff to get into and there's also sure. some new stuff coming out where they or they they came out a couple of years ago where they're just like we're not even going to make the blades spin anymore we're going to have them on big crazy looking loops and the blades are just going to flop around all crazy and you're like, holy <laughs> shit what? Yeah. what the hell yeah, it's uh that one's from like uh ten thousand fish, I think is the company or something. Ketchco, I think. I don't know. Oh, okay. I forget, but it's crazy. We'll talk about sure. that later. We're, not, yeah, we're yeah, on yeah. iCast now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do you want to go back to before we get off Berkeley? Do you want to go back to their soft baits with like the power stinger and like that gulp yep. technology and shit like that? Quick, yep. because I do. Yep. Because gulp blows my <laughs> or yeah, gulp. No, not gulp. Yeah. Um, uh, is it gulp? No, it's gilly. Gilly blows my mind. Gilly, gilly blows gilly your mind. Fucking blows my mind. Dude, I know what gulp gilly. is. Yo, so get check this out. Gilly came out last year. Yes, it's so dope. I have some right now in different oh, sizes. Same. I do. I've I bought a bunch of them. I have like different sizes, different things. They started using. So, um, they started doing their like the pro imaging stuff I think is what it's called or like the real ID imaging. I forget. I don't want to say the wrong thing. Don't quote me on that because everybody calls their stuff a little bit different. Yeah. Um, but the gilly is like a bluegill and it looks like a real bluegill mm -hmm. and the different uh, colors that they have. I have one that looks kind of like a crappie. I have one um it's called crappie it doesn't really look quite like a crappie the the colors are good though like mm -hmm. they you could use it as either and then the reason i have crappie is actually because i couldn't find the bluegills at first mm -hmm. but that took me a while to find and then i have smaller ones that i think will work really well on a drop shot actually using mm -hmm. like so like a more yeah more of a like a finesse style of bait where i think everybody else is going to be fishing them on texas rigs and stuff mm -hmm. Um, but you can put it on a jig, you can fish it anyway, but basically it's just a, a, a bluegill that you can fish as like any other soft plastic. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah. And that was the 2021 I cast soft plastic freshwater winner. And the 2022 I cast soft plastic freshwater winner is also made by Berkeley. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's the power stinger, right? Yes, I was going to yeah. say, like, I Which we just I, talked about I, it before we got the, on here. I was like, I cannot remember the name. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was just like, and I heard, I saw the, I heard the best description of it. And that's why I wanted to bring up Gilly is because Gilly blows my fucking mind. And I know that was last year. And that the best description of this power stinger was yeah. just like, 
Oh yeah, we, we kind of took the, the the Gilly technology and we reversed it for whatever oh, yeah. that means. You might have to have a Gilly yeah. in your hands and you might have to have a power stringer in your hands, but that's what the best description I heard. And I was like, fuck, uh-huh. dude, that's just what I'm using. Like, that's so sick. Yeah, dude. I like, uh, think of it this way. A Gilly is kind of like, almost like ribbed, like there's nubs on it. Uh-huh. And the power stinger is like a waffle. Ah, yeah, yeah, dude. So yeah. like the ghillie has stuff that comes out and the power stinger has stuff that goes in. Goes in. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. it's, and I think both of them are kind of meant to do the same thing. They move water. Like the, when the water, mm-hmm. it's kind of moving like the bait and stuff. When those, there's those spaces, they actually like can catch the water and move the water. And that's what you want when the water is moving. Uh, fish have a lateral line on their body that can actually feel vibrations and stuff. So mm-hmm. you want the, them to move the water because they can actually feel that movement. Mm-hmm. And the beauty of this one too, with them releasing him at the same time, this is basically like releasing what at the same time, the, the slobber knocker. Sorry. Oh, this is like a trailer for the slobber knocker, a beautiful power bait scented trailer to put on the slobber knocker. So you put this thing on the slobber knocker no. and then you cast it out and reel it in. It's like the vibration really? that goes over everything. Yeah. It's like a, cause you can get a swimming I jig. Did not get that. Yeah. So you can get a swimming right. jig and it's like a skirted, a skirted jig, but it doesn't have a blade on it. And basically you just put on like a swim bait or whatever when you cast it, but a swim bait has like a more aggressive tail and you could do that. But a lot of people don't like to do, a real aggressive tail on the bladed jig because it kind of takes away the action of the bladed jig. They like to let the bladed jig do its thing because it just, it's almost like it's waving super fast. That blade <laughs> in the front's just going. Right. right. And this thing. The sound is for all you audio people, but if you're yeah. watching on YouTube, Tim's doing a wave also. He's like, he's doing the hand motion. So <laughs> this is a good one. This is a good one to watch on YouTube. Yeah, you're only sure. listening on a podcast feed. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. Look how excited I am. <laughs> 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 but the, the, the power stinger uh, also like, just like the Gillian stuff, I think it's going to be amazing to fish on a drop shot. It is like a thicker <laughs> profile bait. And yeah. it's got that power bait scent. And I think because of that oh, it does waffle have the tail, scent in it. Oh, yeah. Power, if it says power bait, it's scented. Power. The power. That's one thing. Power bait. I, that's, okay. Yes. Now I and get I, it. And I now can't remember if they came out with it last year or this year, but they make power bait jigs. They, the, you know how like the actual, like the skirted jigs? Where it has like the like all the different flanges coming off. So how we were just talking about jigs. You got the weighted mm-hmm. head mm-hmm. and the hook. There's a skirt. It's like a banded okay. skirt that's actually around the jig. So it's like it has, you know, when you move it, it kind of flows and stuff. Yeah. They made those skirts out of power bait. They smell. They stink. They have oh, scent. Oh, shit. The other no ones way, are dude. all just made out of rubber. They don't have any scent to them at all. You can add no scent if you want. Way, you can dude. buy like squirts and stuff. Yeah, but I can't remember if that was 2021 or 2022 I've been looking at so many sites and got strayed the wrong way at some of these websites where I'm like, mm-hmm. I can't remember if that was this year or last year. Okay. I have a power, I have a Berkeley jig, but I think it's just a Berkeley jig, not a power bait jig. Sure, sure. So, yes. But, uh, but that's, yeah. dude, I didn't Berkeley even think about that years, power stinger. Yeah. Just being a power bait at the same time. Like, I thought they were just, yeah. So that's so sick. It's like double technology, like double down on their tech. I love uh-huh. it. That's a Gillies, the Gillies power bait too. No shit. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm fucking going to the hardware store. This I weekend. know, I know. <laughs> I got it was like two, no, three years ago when I got really excited about what they started coming out with because they wa- worked with, uh, I believe it was Jordan Lee, and they had okay uh, the Pro. Champ, and it's like a little minnow that I was using for um, drop shotting and stuff, and it's like mm-hmm. the real i the same again I. I need to stop saying the name because I don't actually know it. But like the the picture where it looks like a real fish on there, and yeah, it well, was it's their HD prints is what they is what Berkeley yes. calls them. Yes, yeah. the HD yeah. prints. Berkeley calls it, the HD prints where it looks like a fucking real fish. They yeah. call it HD, and then yeah, and, and it does. It looks like a fucking real fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's Crazy. what I had was the the shad ones. 
So like three years ago, I already started getting excited about those where I'm like, this is perfect, but it wasn't that much different than any of the other soft plastics out there. And then all of a sudden, these next two years, they get soft plastic of the year at ICAST because they're just like, you want some shit nobody's ever seen of? <laughs> or no, nobody's ever seen before? And right. for the diehards out there that are watching, yes, the Gilly is very close to another Japanese soft plastic that was out there, but I believe they mm-hmm. talked to each other and power bait got the difference. Plus there's not that much to change on a lot of these, but the power bait is different. The tail's different. It has a little bit. So anyways, if there's anybody hardcore out there that's just be like, you no. idiot, what do you mean? Nobody's ever seen it before. Like, okay, you caught me. <laughs> but, but <laughs> Nothing power, more I can say. <laughs> yeah. But it's not power bait either. I right, right. They don't have could that. Probably smell, get away right. with doing any of that stuff. And they're just like, it is. Did yours have power bait in it? I don't think so. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but do, do you want to talk about uh, gulp going chrome and that worm and that wacky worm rig? Dude, I want to talk. Did? Yeah, I want to talk about that worm and then other two other scented things that I'm excited about before. Like then we can move out. We'll talk about this gulp as the last thing that I think. I had from Berkeley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that worm, it. the gulp worm, uh has like they've had night crawlers before, but this one has a flat back on it and it like swims crazy in the water when you put it on a spinner Dude, rig. It's so amazing to watch. Yeah. I was like, it's just, what the uh, fuck am I oh, looking at, man? Yeah, dude. It's pretty dope how it swims and stuff. I got uh super excited about how that thing swims. And you put it on the spinner rig, so that's basically for walleye and stuff. And the the thing that excites me about that is one, the action. I really like it. I think that like when I get excited looking at stuff, like where I'm like, oh, that looks like it would catch a fish. I think normally it does. You know, some stuff is out there designed to get the the purchaser excited and not necessarily yeah. the fish but there's no way that's not going to be enticing to the fish too dude i looked kinda... at that worm and i was like i'd eat that fucking worm <laughs> right <laughs> yeah <laughs> and that thing i was trying to look here to see if i had the actual name um, oh yeah i didn't i didn't write down the name sr but... crawler oh okay the nice. sr crawler yeah i was looking for the name too so i could jot it down and make sure i get it on the instagram Right, right, right. Yeah, me too. (laughs) SR crawler. And you said it was rigged up in a normal fashion. So you said you specifically told me, I remember the message. You were like, hey, don't, don't, don't pay attention to the rig. Pay attention to how, what the fuck that worm's doing. Right. Yeah. So the video that they were, they were showing it off on was on a spinner rig. So that's just a a blade and there's a number of different kind of spinner rigs like that. You can just rig that up and then you put a worm on it. Right, exactly. You could yep. rig that and, a real night crawler, I'm guessing, right? Oh yes, for a long time, that's what everybody was doing. But the problem that I found, like, because I fish relatively clear water and stuff, yeah. is that the panfish find it a lot faster than, or <laughs> a lot more often than the walleye do. So I'm like either like losing bait or I'm catching like sunfish. And you're like, gosh dang right. it! So it'd be nice to have this too because. With real night crawlers, every time you get a bite, that night crawler is gone for the most part. Sometimes it's not, or sometimes sure. they bite it, and then you don't have much left. Right. And these these gulps are going to be able to catch fish after fish and not have to worry about it. That's the beauty of gulp. They've been making right. gulp for a while, but this sure. tail, because gulp has always been kind of like thicker stuff, so this mm. thin tail that can swim is something mm. that they just came out with. Plus, nice. To have it in different colors, you know, I never really thought about it, but the pro that they had explaining it Mm -hmm. was just like, uh, yeah, so I've never really understood why we make it a natural color where they're like, oh, we want it to be natural nightcrawler because night crawlers are not natural in the lakes. (laughs) There's not worms just swimming around here. I don't know why we're making it brown. And it's like (laughs) that one's like for us where we're just like, oh, yes, the the fish on clear water like it natural. Well, I love that. This was a Berkeley pro that said this. Yeah. Yeah. This was at ICAST that's talking about it. He's like, I've always thought about it. And he's like, so we actually offer this in a couple of different colors. Oh, nice. And you're like, oh, that's beautiful. And and they're making it of more of kind of like a bait fish (laughs) color, you know, where they know that the spinner works, but like a bait fish color, you know, kind of oh. like a shad type color or something to make it like kind of a, like a hologramish yeah, bluish sure, kind of. Sure. So the idea of having it be where 
the spinner rigs always worked. We know that they liked the like flavor of Nightcrawlers. He even said like it's always the Nightcrawlers just kind of been like that scent holder. Scent, so yeah, the gulp Nightcrawlers is a are scent crazy holder. Crazy bastards, man. Yeah, slimy we, bastards. Exactly. And now you have the gulp that's a scent holder with this dope tail action, and you can get yeah. it in different colors. It sounds like a dream Sweet. for walleye fishermen. I can't see them not having like this is one of those where I'm just like. I don't think it's going to be a what if. I think <laughs> this is just going to like blow this up slam real dunk. quick. Slam dunk. You nailed it. The only <laughs> thing I could see be a problem is that like the traditional ones, you can get a third hook back there. You can't put a hook in this tail. Mm. So, you know, because it'll mess with the action. So maybe yeah. mm-hmm. people get mad that there's not an option of, you know, if you're getting short strikes, they're just biting off the tail and you never catch gotcha. them. I don't, that's the only thing I could see that could possibly sure. go wrong with this. I don't want to be like, no doubt it's not, you know, it's going to be perfect. <laughs> the, I, I got you. That's yeah. the only thing. So, yeah, yeah. I got um, you. So, but I'll, I'll just take the reins real quick because we're oh, still yeah. talking about scent and stinky things. I talked yep. about those power bait jigs and that flicker shed, but big bite baits has always yeah, been a decent bait company that uh, has really reasonable prices out there. Uh, so oh, really if you're looking for like jig trailers and nice. stuff. Yeah. Them. That's one that I probably could have brought up on our, uh, the budget fishing. On the budget episode. fishing. Yeah. Big yeah. bite baits and yum baits are both very oh. economical where they're, they're quality baits. They mm-hmm. have scent. They're not garbage and they're normally cheaper than everybody else. I don't oh. really understand why <laughs> you're but, like i'm not sure why but they're they are and they work yeah i think like the rest yeah. of the companies are highballing us and these ones are just like you know we don't have to sell it to you for that much and you're just like <laughs> good on you big bite and so, but big bite baits just came out with their whole line of sensation so oh you know I not, a, not one. A, okay yeah not nice. a lot of different um baits you know that are like real innovative or nothing but because they're coming out with their line of like, you know, where they're trying to come up with a power bait or something that's like a lot stronger smelling than their right, old ones right. are. Yeah. You know, I think they called the big bites were like, ah, no, I don't want to say that either. I was going to say bite juice, but that might be Guggen or whatever. Anyways, mm-hmm. they had their, you know, proprietary they're... blend of smells. Right. But now yes. they're like, this one's bigger and better and here's our whole line of new stuff so maybe with this technology but we'll be looking at the same price point as the other baits but you know Mm -hmm. if Mm -hmm. if they kill it they kill it you know i'm excited to see what they're like so right yeah yeah sick i had that i had big bite baits down as they had a soft bait with a hole through the middle of it so you could run your line through it and then they could hook they had a hook mount on it oh yeah yeah and a yeah. weight built into it and i was like oh shit and then i just mm-hmm. had and some sort of proprietary scent <laughs> right yeah yeah like i totally didn't even take the scent part away from it from the, the like one video that i saw i was like oh sick a soft bait mm-hmm. where you can run the line through what the fuck well why would you yeah. do that i never even thought of it so the through line i have a couple of those actually i got one actually from Monster Bass, shout hey. out to Monster Bass. You know we they're a uh, sponsor on this. You know we got that uh, we do the ads and stuff for Monster Bass. So check them yeah. out. Sometimes you get cool stuff like that that you don't even know it's coming. But really, if TV slash Monster Bass, that's right. The through line, um, you know, like if there's another reason out mm-hmm. there and somebody else knows about it and they want to be like, Hey, this is what it is. I've never really looked into it, but my theory is that when you have the through line, you know how all baits have like a metal piece on the nose yeah. that's sitting there. Yeah. And then you like tie it to that. Or sometimes yeah. you have like a split shot or not a split shot, but like a, a, a split ring on yeah. there. I yep. think you're just eliminating all that stuff on its face. So it looks more natural. Oh, And I also okay. think that, um, there's a possibility that if you go straight to the hook that you're feeling it a little bit better, but I wouldn't think so. Um, that part, I don't think 
you're not would not. really make too big, big of a difference, especially when you're fishing a swim bait like that. Like you're casting yeah. it out, you're reeling it in. If a fish bites, you're catching it. You know, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not something like a jig where you're trying to feel the bite and then you got to set the hook. That's like you're reeling it. And if it bites, the hook is pretty much set. <laughs> right. So, but yeah, I think my theory is that the through line makes it so there's none of that extra stuff on its face. It's there's, as natural yeah, it looking looks more as it can be. That way for sure. Yeah. Leave it, yeah. leave it comment in the youtube video yeah for sure let us know because yeah, yeah i'm curious that's a good yeah like good my point. dad my dad has a musky uh lure that is made with the big thick fluorocarbon leader it comes with it already attached it's through oh. line the line goes through it so the bait looks supernatural in the water i think that's another thing too when it's swimming and stuff mm -hmm. um his is kind of like a glide bait swim thing where it's or like a swim bait where it's kind of going back and forth and stuff Mm -hmm. um, I think it might help the action a little bit when you eliminate those, that extra line and the, the extra stuff there, extra the drag. Sure, yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's my theory. No drag. I'm guessing yeah, yeah. if I looked into it, it'd just tell me exactly what I said. So I'm not going to look into it. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. Where are you, where are you going next? Where are you going next after, after a uh, big bite? Oh, so the, I mean, that's a lot of, what I have for the baits and stuff. That's what I'm excited for the baits. There's a lot of different stuff that's out got, there. Um, oh, you got another I got one? One more bait thing. Hit that me I with. Hit me with. Because I'm sure. Do I? I sense so much stuff that I'm sure I'm forgetting things. <laughs> well, I just wanted to talk about Lunker Hunter and their hybrid square bill blade. Oh Does yes, dude. I was like, "What is?" I, I was going to even... talk about that. Good call. <laughs> okay, good. Because I saw it and I'm like, "Okay, cool." Like, I get it, it's a hybrid and stuff, but, like, I don't know enough about a blade bait, I guess, because I'm not totally wrapping my head around this thing. Yeah, so a blade bait actually has, like, a really quick vibration, and a blade bait, there's, a, they've been around for a long time, and there's different ties on the back. Most of them have, like, three different dots, so when you're using a blade bait, you can tie it in different spots, and it actually makes it swim in different ways, you know, one for, like, vertical jigging and one for, like, kind of pulling it towards you, but you kind of jig that one in open water. So you just kind of rip it and like let it fall and it'll go like up fast and then it'll kind of fall, but it'll kind of flutter on the fall. So it'll kind of flutter down. And it's almost like a spoon kind of like a bladed yeah, jig. I, I, that's what I thought a, was like, uh, I saw it and I was like, well, it's a spoon stuck on its side. <laughs> Which, right. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, that's not what a spoon is. Right. A spoon is but totally it's a, not it's a, stuck. It's a, it's a, yeah, and it's flat. Like a spoon is actually curved like a spoon is. Right, so it rotates, and, so it does and that. And the blade, yep. And the blade the baits water. are just super. So I've just never seen anything like it before. And I think it might have actually came out last year, but I'm super excited to try it. I didn't see any. I've definitely never seen it before. Sure. This iCast, um, I guess last year, I didn't get as into the iCast either, you know, where it just sure. wasn't coming across my feed as much or something but i don't yeah. remember i may or have like shit just wasn't light up i mean you also got to remember last year there's still a lot of covid and like restrictions and shit like that not in florida yeah. so much but like generally speaking people yeah. weren't moving as much and uh, last year i saw the ghillie and then like it just had blinders on like i'm just i gotta find the ghillie. that's <laughs> i it. agree it's the same thing yep 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 I, yeah yep same thing so, happened to me <laughs> So to have that was just dope. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and and this guy here is a crankbait, and then the back end is basically like that blade bait, and I just don't know if it's going to have like a kind of real, like the way it moves the water. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think mm -hmm. about a regular crankbait that kind of is rounded and just kind of swishes, it's just, just going to be like super aggressive vibration feeling. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. It's it's the what was it? it's a glitch, right? It's a glitch. Oh, you mean the name of the bait? Yeah, I think it's called the glitch. Oh, yeah. I didn't I didn't write it down because I was just so enthralled with the like idea of somebody just merged two baits, and I don't understand what that means. No, dude, <laughs> I do. I don't know. You know what I mean? I honestly don't know what it means either. It's just exciting. Oh. Right. To see that, somebody that's thinking probably outside what of the makes box. it so exciting though, right? Is like somebody just fucking put grapes and cheese together. 
Right. right. He's like, whoa, what the fuck? I don't know what that means yet, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> right. You're just like, I don't know. That's just like that whole thing going around right now where people are like putting Mountain Dew in their light beer. What the fuck? I know, right? That's what I said. But then I was at a graduation party I'll that had it. light beer and Mountain Dew. And I was like, it was sweet. no better time to experiment than this place <laughs> that just has it ready to roll. And I did it. And it's pretty good, dude. It I'm works. I'm sure it's pretty awesome. But the problem is when you do that, then you're dealing with like a 2% alcohol drink. And you're like, this right. should taste good. This right. is like weaker than what I could go up and buy at the grocery store <laughs> at nine o'clock at night on a Sunday. <laughs> right, right, in right. In Minnesota, exactly. that's like you can't get alcohol in Minnesota at that time. Right. Yeah. You can get the cheap. We had we we just finally got <laughs> alcohol sales approved in Minnesota like two, three years ago. And it was like, but only till noon. Like from from like 10 o'clock until noon like that's it it's not that <laughs> right. bad it's it's more like from like 10 to 5 but right. like there's still window of, on on sundays so that's the reference for anybody outside of minnesota <laughs> right and if you don't buy it within the allowed times at a liquor store there's allowed 3.2 percent alcohol beer yep of the same kind to be sold at the store so yeah right but yeah i believe that was the glitch i can't freaking find it i send a whole bunch of but stuff you'll find it uh, we got it written down in our production notes so you put it over. yeah we'll get it up on instagram sure. i think yep. hear me over here like nappy roots <laughs> flipping through the picture the pages of my favorite notebook over here <laughs> oh, oh no hell no <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of oh no hell no we've done an hour on icast already Oof. and we got plenty more to go i am making an audible right now the middle of the podcast we are going full fishing topic minute one hour and 30 one hour 45 we're going full fishing topic no random take we're moving the cartoon topic over to next week because i just want to keep going with icast and tim speaking of cast cast king let's get into some fucking hardware are you ready yeah is that where we're going for sure let's do it yeah dude the dumbest thing for me can i go first yeah dude for sure hit it dumb but it's dope. And I yeah. think it's the best collabo ever is like, yeah, of course, get Mike to do it. Mike Iconelli's little micro pliers thing, dude, that Casting <laughs> is making. Right. Like, it's so good. It's so yeah. good. It's like the dumbest little accessory thingy. Like it's it's <laughs> like the most nothing. It's like the thing that just like bounced off your shoulder and you're like, I'll come back to that. And then you go back to it and you're like, fuck yeah, dude, I want that thing so much. <laughs> Right. Yeah, dude. And they're they're like super lightweight and stuff. But then they have um the there's a hole in the players too. Are you looking at that same one? I think we're talking about the same one. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you sent me. It's Mike Iconelli's like it's a Mike Iconelli sponsored or like it's his pro model <laughs> players. Okay. I don't know how yeah. else to put that because I've the, come from skateboarding and snowboarding. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. I mean what like like the pros just a lot of times they work with them where the pro is almost like obviously the expert. So the people who come to him right. just be like, right. You're out there more than anybody. What do you want? Yeah. What would you right. want? Right. And the players has a loop in it so you can put your finger through it. So like while you're using the players, you can just like slip it over your finger and like tie your line and stuff. Yeah. So, so you it's, have to set it down. So it's always yeah. on your hand. It's always it's always yeah. like it's like the thing that used to do with the gun, like the Wild West thing that used to do with the gun where you would like when you had your cap gun and you'd fl- you'd spin it around your finger. It's oh, yeah. like that concept, except for no gun it's, yeah, it's dumb i don't know I, do you does that make any sense <laughs> oh it makes totally sense now i want to do that that's why i'd be like and you retie the line you know tying it up and then you just go and then quick crimp and then catch it weight spin it around your finger crimp the weight and then be like yeah right right i actually probably wouldn't say anything just give a nod doff of the cap to the is it doff top tip of the cap you know, tip of your ten the, gallon cow, a, cowboy. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure the audio listeners love that with the. Sh- 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 wimp, wimp. 
<laughs> that's, just, that's how we talk, though. <laughs> it's like we're not always great with the words, but we got sounds. <laughs> well, I got sounds for days, baby. But like that, dude, seriously, that little micro pliers, it was just like, yeah, man, this is the most practical thing that I've just seen. Like you can tell that was just made by somebody, like you said, just put in the hours. And then they just like, well, we should kind of make something like this. And then they start designing it and they work it and they tweak it. And you're like, yeah, man, that thing yeah. is right on. <laughs> yeah, like, dude. It's so I mean, useful. Casking is doing some big things that's smart where it's just like I've been seeing some new stuff that's coming out from them where it's even like the rod holder that they would put on the wall where it's like a half circle. But each one of like it's like a a space can like condensing one because the rods relatively thin but the reels yeah. are what causes space yeah. all they did was offset the holders the holders are like here's one and then here's one and then here's one and then here's one oh. you just move those reels above each other you can scrunch them way closer and you're just like oh yeah that was all took why didn't we think of that oh. you know what the hell yeah are you gonna be able to find that thing is that thing new or is that 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 rod, that holder, rod holder is i think that's relatively new too and they you came can find out, it, put it on Instagram. <laughs> since, since we're talking, yeah, right. I'll put it on here. I'll put it on Instagram. We'll put the list down. What did I put? The rod yeah. holder? What did we down. just talk about first? Players. Players. Yeah. Then Specifically, the rod holder. Mike Iconelli's branded on them, but like, whatever. Yeah. It doesn't matter. They're not going to, it's not going to be a fucking $30. Or it might be, it might be right at 30 bucks. I bet yeah. you that thing sells for $19.99. Yeah. It's not going to be crazy expensive. Some people go a little bit overboard, but I, the uh, cast King is actually one of those e-commerce style websites that you're not seeing sold in stores and stuff. That's what I was, that, oh, are they? I, I brought that up. Um, the episode after we did the budget one, because I forgot oh. about hitting the, yes. I, the stuff like that. But I, yeah, now that you say that I remember cast that. King is one of those legit ones. And also along with, Pissy fun. I heard somebody pronounce it, and I was like, "That sounds worse than what I was saying." <laughs> I was saying "pissy fun," and they're they're saying right. "pissy fun." What I heard a dude. different I heard a different way of of saying it on a different. Did you thing. really? Yeah, yeah. I so heard, I mean, pissy fun, pissy fun. Yeah. So <laughs> that's kind of what I. That's kind of how I say it. I just put the emphasis on the a different syllable. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah the yeah. I put a different. Emphasis on the diff, uh, the wrong <laughs> syllable, but <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> but they they also had a new um, a line uh, a thing to help you put line on. Yeah, that actually, the cooler counter yeah, thing. That, that Is that counts. what you're talking about? Yeah, that counts. Yeah, so you know yeah, exactly. You need to explain that shit to me because I was I that my note is just like, what does that even mean? Like, what so, is a cooler counter? How does that? help so it counts the yards that you're putting on there okay. because a lot of reels are rated for a certain amount so if you want to go specifically oh. to that it'll be like oh you can have like 150 yards of eight pound test or you know 100 and you know 50 pounds of 10 pound whatever it happens to really? be really and then you can put that 150 on but it also helps like depending on if you're buying bigger spools because you can buy spools in different sizes Oh, so like if you're buying, you can buy like thousand yard spools. Right. And then you, you can really bulk up a, now and then yeah. you can use this to get more line for less price because you buy in more of a bulk sort of situation. Right. And you can use this to help you gauge that where before maybe you're only buying 150 yards because that's what your spinning rod is for or your spinning right yeah and some of and some of them depending on how big your spool is it's really key to try to stay into that like right line amount like if you have a spinning mm -hmm. reel and you put too much line on it mm -hmm. the line can kind of come unraveled on its own because mm -hmm. it's not being held on there like the spool doesn't have the edges as well it just kind of unravels and stuff and the same thing right. with the uh, okay uh, like casting reel and stuff. Sometimes like if you overload it, you can be problems and stuff. If you underload it, then you can just get uh, spooled. You know, if you get a real big mm. fish and it starts running, you just run out of line sometimes. And right, right. <laughs> when your line gets to the end, it's just going to snap. There's no, your drag right. will only help you if you have enough line to <laughs> really? play with. <laughs> so, good, point, so, good point. 
yeah so that's that's cool to be able that to you know cool. like if you buy in bulk to be able to count your line and make sure you're getting that because yeah like those thousand sure. those thousand thousand yard spools like especially if you're a pro or somebody that's using a lot of different things yeah you can get a thousand yard spool and spool up uh you know that's at least eight different reels worth of line if you're looking at 150 yards of reel right Right. So that's, that's uh, yeah, big time stuff with that. And then um, I don't think I even sent you the picture of it. Uh, I got to write down the line thing. But did you see Frables? I know you were checking out Twitter and stuff. Did you oh. see Frables new net? Yeah, 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 dude. <laughs> yeah, Frable. I did. Can we? Can, okay, let's go to Frable. But I want to go back to Cast King on a couple. Oh yeah, let's do it on a couple things. Yeah, let's do I it. I want to go to Frable though because you just brought up that net. That was one of my favorite things, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, super cool. So we're you want to talk let's, about Frable then? Yeah, let's talk about yeah. Let's just let's just talk about Frable because we can come back because the what I want to talk about with Cast King. It ties into other stuff. So let's go to Frable and specifically kick it off with that net that has the weight, the scale yeah. built into it, dude. There's yeah. The built in scale. <laughs> yeah. Up to 30 pounds. So you're literally going to be able to weigh any bass you catch because the world record is not 30 pounds. Doesn't matter where you're fishing. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> so, Doesn't matter where you're fishing. yeah, you can catch that bass and then literally just kind of like turn it and hold it up. And be able to weigh that fish almost immediately. So it's going to help the stress of the fish. And it's just going to be like convenient. You can yeah. just get it. Lift it up. You, like you're honestly. Everybody wants to hold the fish. You know you want to pick it up. You want to take a picture and stuff. But it, it helps right. minimize the amount of time that you have it out of the water. You know. Might, yep. Just pick it up. Get that picture. Put it back in the water. Because yep. this way you get the fish in the net. You can lift it up. Get that weight. Put it back in the water get the hook out or whatever or take yep. the hook out reach first. down in there pull the yeah you know, pull the hook yeah and just get it done man it's 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 a it's it's a pretty cool. genius idea as long as it stays accurate the only thing i thought is like mm -hmm. how many times does it have to have a big bass go off in that net before the calibration gets all tweaked or can you recalibrate it? Maybe you can well, recalibrate you can it. Maybe. Tear, you can do a tear on it every time. Oh, you can so, tear it. So yeah, probably... you can. I saw that you can tear it. So like okay. every time before you put the net in the water, right? If you're not in an adrenaline pumping crazy situation and you have the mentality to just be like, oh shit, that's right. Tear the scale. Yeah. You can hit it. It'll zero out. You can go down, reach it, you know? So right. like. It, that oh, is yeah. that is a feature of it. It does have okay. like that full scale capability. Makes so sense. And it should for those hang of you, in there. Just just to make sure for those of you out there that are not aware of scale terms, tear yes. is like zeroing it out. You're just right. hitting it to right. zero to make sure that like you know whatever's in there. Maybe you've added some northern slime and it put a it put <laughs> right. an ounce of there's or, or ounce even of the water slime. like. Even it being wet, they, it, right. I didn't hear specifically that it couldn't be soaked down a little bit, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I I didn't do a lot of research in there, but it makes a lot of sense if you can tear it. I mean, even if it's, you know, it's not going to be that crazy big of a deal where, I'm, you know, it might be. Yeah. It might a, be a few A couple ounces. of fractions. Uh, probably not even a few ounces. Probably just fractions of an ounce, you know, like an eighth right. or whatever. Right. But yes, super but cool. But still to know very that. Very cool. Um, also I don't like that you're putting out good products for Abel and Plano cause I'm not happy with your customer service, but I can't <laughs> say you guys aren't putting out cool stuff. Right. Just like how about you focus on your customer service like you do on your new products. <laughs> <laughs> cause they also came out with a Plano, um, has their whole series of like the tan and, uh, yellow. I think it's edge okay the tackle boxes and okay. they just came out with a frog one dude that frog tackle box yeah yeah uh -huh. isn't it dope yeah dude, and it, it's so sick you could do that with almost any baits the only problem with some of the other baits is like uh that I'm, i know they have like a specific one for spinner baits okay. but that makes a lot of sense to have them just like hinged and hanging you can hold so many frogs in there because all frogs are pretty much the same they got that eyelid on the front and then there's like two mm -hmm. hooks 
And the hooks are basically like you don't have to worry about them getting tangled up because the frog body is soft. Mm -hmm. So the hooks are basically like hides the hooks in a way, right? Yeah. Like the body gives way to expose the hooks. The hooks are generally safe, weedless, whatever you want to say. Like you really can't snag your shit on a frog hook unless it's being pressed, unless the body of the frog is being pressed on, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. It still happens. You know, sometimes your line gets underneath the lily pad and then you pull the thing and then the lily pad compresses it because you're the the buoyancy of the frog is pushing up on the lily pad and you end up getting that. But most of the time when you're fishing top water, you have heavy enough stuff to rip it out. So it's not like snagging is not a possibility, but sure, for sure, sure it is designed sure. to not have a snake. And it's definitely one of the weed like most weedless things because you're literally casting yeah. it onto like the thickest mass matted vegetation and stuff but right. that thing is dope because it's you hang all those frogs but then it's also hinged on the one side so what? instead of like reaching in there awkwardly you can just like pop it up and grab off the frog you want oh sick dude yeah. i did not see that that's yeah. awesome i know and they <laughs> hang like the one point that i i really took away from it was since they're hanging all those I don't know, the frills that come off of the back oh, yeah. of the frog yep. as the imitation legs or, or yeah. whatever you want the, to say. The skirt. That's the skirt. You know, okay. Was, so yeah. yeah, the skirt that comes off that is doing the leg motion of the frog uh in a artificial frog bait is Yeah. It's drying it out. Like because they're just hanging there now. They're not being just flopped into your tackle box and right. left to sit yep. in their own shit and get tangled up in each other and stuff. I was like, Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. It's, it's pretty awesome. So nice work playing on Unfrable, but also fuck you playing on Frable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I still don't have windows for my ice house. If anybody's wondering, they sent me an ice house with no windows and I never got my windows and I've tried to talk to him. And one person is like, Oh, send me pictures. And then immediately afterwards, they're like, we don't have any of those windows. <laughs> Well, I don't have any of those windows either. So what are we going to well, do about neither it? Neither do I. So what the <laughs> fuck is going on? <laughs> so anyways, I'm not going to get into a whole thing there, but that's why I okay, say, okay, that's okay. why I say F them. F yeah. them. You want to, you want to stick to electronics here for a second and then, and then go uh, back to some reels. <laughs> yeah. You want to talk about right, electronics. Right. Because right, right. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about Minn Kota and their target lock. <laughs> but didn't hummingbird do the same thing did you see that hummingbird and Minn Kota are in cahoots they are Minn Kota makes the trolling motors hummingbird makes the depth finders and they work together oh, to that's what's going on yes that's what's going on so they're like they're if they're not the same company if they haven't merged together they're essentially partnered up like I do this, you do that. We work together very harmoniously. Right. Okay, okay. Yes. I got you then. So the cool is, dude, I think, and also, you know, it probably could have been like a a fishing news thing, um, but I think that this is a big, and I haven't looked into it another part too. I want to preface that. I have no idea exactly how he did it, and I forget the guy's name. I should look it up. Uh, but there was a fisherman that just broke the century mark in yeah. bass fishing in bass, for yep. smallmouth. Mm-hmm. He that caught, was what we were talking about on the last podcast. We were talking about St. Lawrence on the last podcast. Yes. And he, yeah, keep, keep going, keep going. So he broke the century mark, meaning that he caught over a hundred pounds in the in however the many yeah however yep. many days it was yep so it happened you, twice in this one tournament and it had never happened prior to that is my memory or it had happened one time before it had happened if it had happened before that it had happened a few times and now it had happened twice in the same tournament and i think the person who did it also did it as the youngest member of the tournament at the time. Yeah. It, either way. I, I'm not, I, I may have blown that out of proportion, but smallmouth, not, it just hadn't happened before. It, it's just so, like everyone was fucking mind blown. 
Yeah, and even the announcer is like, he's got this many, he needs this much to take the lead, and then he takes it and he goes, oh, 28 pounds, and this guy just broke the century mark for the first time ever. And oh the crowd's my. like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it's, it's crazy. But uh, the reason I think that all these things are like, coming together and all these people are weighing in bags that they've never wore weighed in before Mm -hmm. is because of this technology, man. Yeah. And so what we're talking about here is this spot lock and live sonar is what they have now. It's called target lock as a target lock. Yes. Right. Yes. And they have like the 360 imaging too, which is crazy. That's been out for a while now, but Oh, here I got it Tim. Yeah. Spot lock existed already yes they were which would just kind of let you lock into a specific spot it's almost like i'll I'll simplify it it's almost just like the trolling motor gps thing right like exactly the, the, yes and so we'll just call spot lock that target lock now was i'll i'll, I'll make a generalization of the descriptions that i've been hearing it's like oh look at that Stump. Crazy. There's a crazy yes. good stump right here. Couldn't see it. It's not above water. It's literally a completely submerged stump. But I got a feeling. And you lock on to that stump. Yeah. Now, dude. not even just the spot, not just the general area, but you literally lock on to a stump. Yeah. So check this out. I'll explain it like this too. Spot lock actually drives your trolling motor Mm. and make like keeps your boat where you are at that time. Like you said, with the GPS, it keeps you locked into that spot. So regardless of what happens, the wind pushes you, whatever. Yeah. It's not trying to keep you face. Yeah. It's not trying to keep you faced in a certain way or whatever. It's just trying to keep your trolling motor and your GPS right where you are. Here's the crazy thing about the target lock. Like you said, that stump, they lock onto that stump. I heard the guy, one of the guys talking about it, because I've heard a couple of different guys talking about it, Kevin Van okay. Dam and a bunch of different dudes. Yeah, because they've been out already fishing it on the bass circuit and shit yeah, like that, right? right? Like they've been yeah. out there throwing it this year. Yeah, already. and that's the thing too. A lot of these guys, you know, when you're, we're talking prototypes and stuff, these pro, pro fishermen are out there already fishing it. So a lot of these baits are tried and true. Like they're already out there catching fish. They know they catch fish because they go to these manufacturers and they say, hey, I want this. You don't have that. And they go, we can make that for you. And then when it's successful, they go, oh, shit, we're going to market that. Right. They're fishing the concept car. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Yep. So they're out there with like these baits. A lot of these baits that you're seeing, you'll even see them. They'll be like, this is the one that got me 13th place on whatever. And you're just like, Mm -hmm. really? And I still can't get it? (laughs) <laughs> but <laughs> so that target lock locks onto that stump. And I heard the guy saying, so now the live sonar imaging or forward facing is a better mm-hmm. way to think of it because it's forward sure. facing imaging. So it's shooting the sonar forward and it's showing you in real time what's directly at wherever you're pointing the sonar. Yeah. But the problem yep. before this was there was never really, you know, the boat would move and then you'd have to move the live sonar. Now the, oh, because it, the way that it's attached to the boat, it was locked. Yeah. To the boat. Yeah. So some so of the them, boat I would think start going left and you'd be like, damn it. I don't know what yeah. Doing. And some of them, I think know. would like attach to the trolling motor or whatever. So it would kind of turn that way, but it would, you would point at it, but then however you needed to move, you know, you'd have to kind of like turn your trolling motor away from it to move a little bit and then turn it back to where you were. To now, control the boat. Because yes. you'd be you'd be wanting to point the sonar at the <laughs> thing, but that points the trolling motor against the waves, and then you have to adjust the trolling motor with the waves and like <laughs> yeah. you end up fight. It's almost a fight. Yep. And for right now, at least, the way this works is there's an actual rod with this uh sonar and that's how the forward facing is for most of them you when you get to your spot you put in this extra thing so it's like you're dropping your trolling motor and you're dropping your forward facing sonar Uh so that pole goes down so now you have this motor that'll actually like learn and lock onto that target so this guy 
locks onto that stump, right? Mm-hmm. He drives a full 360 around that stump. Yeah. And that sonar stays locked onto it. So he's able to drive all the way around it. And that using sonar his, keeps pointing at it. He just uses his foot in the trolling motor to do a circle around the stump. Yeah. And all I yeah, can think of is like, that's like casting a fucking gill net, man. From you oh. to that stump, you're seeing everything in between it all the way around. You as can he literally. Because as he does the 360, he just. Yeah. I'd be using that all the time. Every time I found some piece of structure, mm-hmm. I'd go like as far as I could away from it with, to get an f- accurate reading. Yep. And I'd just drive a circle and see what I see in between me and that. I'd be using it on my like test days all the time. Oh, yeah. I'd be driving around and be like, Practice oh, Practice day would a- just be like using fucking target lock all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and with your 360 imaging and your side imaging and stuff, you'd be able to see like where this other structure is and then you see the structure and then you lock onto it and you drive around in circles. I mean, it's basically like there's almost nothing you can't see anymore. Right. Unless it's windy. Go back to the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to the last episode. Nice tie back to it. Nice one. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Is that it for for electronics? What else did you have? Because I only had down, I I had that down because it just blew my mind. And then of course, yeah, the- I mean that's that's the new electronic thing. That's the one that won it. You know, I don't, right, right. I don't know. There's other ones that won. Like there's really cool new stuff for ice fishing, but it's not, mm-hmm. it's not anything that's like that where it's like mind blowing. Like oh, you know, there's been so much <laughs> yeah. stuff that like. If it would have came out a different year, you would have been like, that's cool. But there's so much stuff this that's been just, just like, whoa. Yeah, I've been I've been crazy. crazy impressed with this year. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into some reels, dude. Because yeah. go I, I wanna ju- we'll jump back to Cast King again with this uh reel thing to mm-hmm. to kick it off. Because they had that bait caster. With yes. the pip the pitching and flipping switch on it. And I was like, is that new? Is that cool? Like what's going on it, there? <laughs> it, it seems is, cool to me. Yeah, it is cool. The pitching and fishing, the pitching and fishing and vision and vision. The, the <laughs> flipping switch has been around for a long time on a lot of different reels and stuff. So oh, okay. that's been something um that a lot of different uh manufacturers have done. So uh basically Instead of that switch makes it so, you know, like on a bait caster or even like a, uh, no, spin caster would be more different, but like a bait caster, when you push the button down and it clicks it, Mm -hmm. that doesn't pop back up until you turn the reel. Flipping. Oh, right. It's just open. It's just open spool. Well, flipping is like you push it, right. When you click it down, it's open spool and it doesn't close until you turn that reel. Right. And flipping is like it's just kind of spring loaded almost. It won't click down. Mm. So you can click that button and flip it. And as soon as you lift your thumb, it'll stop Bam. it. So it's it almost kind of like using it like a spin caster. Okay. Which is like the old school, you know, like the okay. Snoopy poles are spin casters. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Yeah. Where yeah, you put yeah, yeah. your thumb down and then right. as soon as you, you know, and you then can when you throw let it, it go, let go, that's when thing. that's how you cast it. You know, yep. it's kind of. Okay. The the it's different, but kind of the same where you're but doing a lot with your thumb. I get yeah. You know? I I follow you. Yeah. So but this one is more like when you click it down, it's releasing it, you know. Okay. So it's the same but opposite. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. So it was nothing it was nothing special, but they have that it it wasn't nothing special really. Is that I thought well, it was. That, so I took notes. Yeah, that switch ne- necessarily wasn't that sw- uh, special, but to see what they're doing and stuff, mm. and at the weight they're mm. doing it, uh, is pretty cool. To be able to get some of this stuff, um, you know, like that one that I sent you, uh, with the Mega Joss. Like, mm-hmm. also, some of these I'm super pumped on, not necessarily because of all the performance and stuff. Like, it's that different, mm-hmm. but they've come out with new looks. And just like how we were talking about the auto show and stuff, sometimes they don't really change the performance of what they've had. It's been tried and true, but you look at them and you're yep. like, damn, dude, <laughs> look at that new body style. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Sure. So, like so this one. Engine and drive tra- uh, drive yeah. Train, but. And this one also like uh, 
the speed. I don't know what Cast King has had on some of those ones, but this one's a nine one to one gear ratio. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's I mean, fast, dude. That that's fast. a that's a fast one. A nine to one, just if you know ratios, <laughs> right? Yeah, if you ratios know ratios, aren't that hard to understand. Exactly, and it's and it's a nine to one. Yeah, and the nine nine Jesus. to one is like the every turn every of this handle, time you the crank spool's it. turn a nine. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yep, Which and then wild. Depending on the spool size and stuff, you know, you're picking up. Uh, that's course. probably picking up like mid forty inches. Jesus. You do you do this. You picked up a yard over a yard, right? No, that's yard not right. is three feet, twelve times. Three. Yes, it's thirty six. So yeah, over yeah. a yard, over a yard. You're right. I was right. I'm just second guessing myself on a bunch second of stuff. Second guessing your math, man. Stick but yeah, you. the the cast king. The the reel that the the spinning reel that carbon is fiber bastard almost the record. It is only four point six ounces. That's crazy, dude. It's think about so it, sixteen light. ounces is a pound. If anybody is not putting that together, sixteen ounces is a pound. Pound ain't that much. Like yeah. it's not that heavy. A pound is not that heavy. Here's here's a better reference. A major league baseball. Weighs five point two five ounces. Oh my god! That reel <laughs> is almost always nothing to an adult human. Yes, it's nothing, and it's almost a full ounce less than a baseball. Holy <laughs> shit! Yeah. Is that carbon fiber spinner right? Yeah, dude. Isn't that thing sick? Yeah, dude. And I think I think the the record is like four point three ounces, so it's super close to the lightest reel ever, like lightest spinning reel. Really ever produced, and yeah. these are guys. This Cast King, you said, is like usually someone you can rely on. Fair oh, for pricing, sure, right? Yes, because Cast King is one of them. Um, That's sick. Yeah, and Cast King is one of them that uh, is the the online. My oh, they're like direct. Work. They're like they, the manufacturer yeah. and the and they, the reseller, basically. Right, right. And it's like the they're direct that's, direct that's, sales. Yeah, basically directly, like strictly e-commerce is what it would be, right? I'm using that correctly, aren't I? Like, yeah, e-commerce yeah, yeah, like for sure. But more than website. likely, the reason they went e-commerce is because they're else they're the manufacturer and the seller. Yeah. So the so lightest. Like, yeah. I I just looked. The lightest is four point four ounces. So they're 0.2 ounces away from the lightest thousand right. size. Should right. make that apparent to a thousand when you're talking reels because they go like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Oh, okay. Salt water has bigger, but right. um, 1,000 is like relatively small. Finesse baits, uh, panfish, stuff like that. But still, it's insane. Still. And yeah. especially when you're fishing panfish and stuff, the lighter gear you have, the better you're going to feel the bite of a smaller fish, you know? Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah, for sure. It's awesome. Well, when you notice that one go up, dude, hit me. Yeah, I was trying to see. <laughs> I was when trying you, to when see you're looking at that one, because I know you will, send me the link at the same time. Be like, I don't know, dude, if you want it, you know? Here. Yeah. And I was looking, The they had, it's called the Kestrel. It, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm saying that right or not, but they had their spinning reels and they're like $200. So, or they're, they're, a bait caster reels are like two hundred dollars oh. a piece, so they're not okay. they're not cheap, mm. but they're also you know like a ridiculously nice reel. I was gonna say top notch, right? Like you really yeah. would put them in the like you'd put them put, up high. I w- I would definitely put them up high, and I guarantee you that like with companies like Cast King and Pissifon, Pissifon, mm-hmm. Pissif. Yeah, whichever. Those reels are way cheaper than their counterparts that sure. are of the bigger brand names and stuff. Right. But right. let's move on to Abu Garcia. Yeah, dude. Overhauled all of their reels. They already had all of these reels, and holy shit, do they look good. All of them. Yes, I looked at do. all of them. I'm like, <laughs> Damn, dude, what they a look move! So man. good. I always, I already thought they looked good and stuff, but they've had those same looks for like ten years. So to see them, yeah, give a facelift. That's another reason why I'm like, this year is just crazy. You got 
reels that have been around forever getting facelifts all this new stuff coming out it's just been a heck yeah. of a year for iCast yeah when you told me how many years the Revo you're like dude it's been around forever and now all of a sudden they're revamping it like here's look at this this is just like a whole overhaul visually and I'm like sweet because they're tried and true right like oh yeah they're tried true and it's the Revos right that you're talking about like that whole line yeah. basically Yep, yeah, because some of their other ones um didn't really change much. Their spinning reels all look good, but the the new Revo line all around, like Revo looks different. The R looks more aggressive, almost like how a type R with like uh Honda's like lines of stuff, you know, like Civics oh. and stuff that are type R's yeah. where the R is like just a way more aggressive type R or sure. um it reminds me of like like the Japanese anime style type writing. Like it reminds like the yep. the the graphics kind of remind me of initial D. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Is it initial D? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. um but yeah, the 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 top of the reel, I don't know what you exactly call it, but the top of the reel is kind of like flatter and then it says whatever it is up there and then the actual like Revo symbol is way cooler and it's just, I'm kind of floored at these, like the spinning reels are gorgeous. Yeah. I, the rockets, because they have the Revo rockets, which are really fast gear ratio are so oh. cool looking. Yeah. And the just oh my gosh, man! I love that name, by the way. <laughs> yes, the Revo They're rocket, like super high fucking gear ratio. We're just gonna call it the rocket. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's That's gnarly. Such a dope name. And this Revo rocket spinning reel is a seven six to one for a spinning reel. That's fast for a spinning reel. That's very fast for a spinning yeah. reel. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and like I just can't get over these looks. I and I I love I love they the look Revos. Real good. You're yeah. right. They look super good. Yeah, and not to mention like they're just awesome reels. Now just getting a super dope facelift. I don't know about right. the components right. on the inside. I literally just saw them and I'm like, oh, like you don't. I don't even need to hear what the inside's about. Honestly, like I have so <laughs> much faith in the Revos that just seeing the facelift, I'm really? just like, yes, please. Because I wow. have a Revo. Uh, sx and i have a revo toro for my musky rod and i've ridiculously impressed with both of them and i have nice. my first musky reel was the old school abu garcia ambassador and that's another thing that just came out i don't know if you knew about that but they just released the abu garcia ambassador 100 year anniversary edition oh, holy shit uh, yeah, that's already dude. out on the market that's not icast stuff that's already out. Um, I that maybe was like last year's actually. Okay, maybe, but still, remember. it's a new. But it's still, a new. Still, dude, a still hundred years. Years. That's the old school like can Abu Garcia. Yeah, that is so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I have they one re of, they basically re released it with new technology inside. Well, they've they've been they've still been making it. You can still go buy a brand new ambassador. Oh my god. Yeah. That is so, so sweet. So it's just each year, it's like the same thing with just new, newish parts or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Like the, the thumb is definitely not a lot better. I don't. I think the old school ones, they mm -hmm. didn't have like the casting thumb piece. I think mm -hmm. it was a way different. They didn't have like a a thumb part. It was kind of like a trigger on the side. Oh. Because I don't know if a lot of people were casting with those. You know. Oh. Maybe oh. they were, but I think it. Was, I think a lot of it in the old school was just kind of like trolling and stuff. I think that's where it got its start. Yeah. So all you would have to do is hit this button to let line out. You weren't to let actually it out like and then it, it would drag. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, before we get into the there's there's more to go with uh, Abu Garcia here, but we got to take a break. We got to do the ads before we fucking close up this podcast. So <laughs> we're gonna take a break, and even though there's no random take on the other side of the break, we're gonna go ahead and take it here. Have some fun with the ads. <laughs> Welcome to the break, friends and family. This is a ad. 
It is officially an ad for Monster Bass. And that is reallyf.tv slash Monster Bass. That's right. Reallyf.tv slash Monster Bass is an right. URL that you can follow to help out the Real AF TV podcast. If you go to reallyf.tv slash Monster Bass, that lets Monster Bass know that we from the Real AF TV podcast sent you. And this is where I pass the ball over to Tim to actually talk about what Monster Bass is. I got the rock. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Monster Bass is a subscription website that is awesome. They set you up with a bunch of good gear. If you're a new fisherman, they're going to hook you up with a bunch of stuff that you know works because it's curated by a bunch of fishermen mm -hmm. who knows what who know what catch fish. And if you're a seasoned angler, they have a lot of cool stuff. I was I'm getting baits that I don't normally like see. There's mm -hmm. baits from different companies and stuff, and some of them are super cool. But just so mm -hmm. you give a little visual here and give you an understanding of what things look like, this is what you're getting. You order a box. It comes with a bag, but the bag is dope. It has like a little, it says contents right here. You can write on it, zipper bag, nice clear bag, so you can put all your stuff in there and get it all situated. Mm -hmm. And some of the baits, like it comes with the terminal tackle too. So like uh, if you are a new fisherman and you're trying to get things set up, don't worry, they're going to hook you up. So yeah, in yeah. a bag, like here's a couple of different things. KVD Perfect Plastic. These are worms that are set up that will work for like a drop shot or just a regular, you know, you can put it on a Texas rig. You can just fish it weightless. So more worms from X-Zone. Like if you're wondering, oh, are they all brands I've never heard of? No, X-Zone, Strike King, super popular. Well, KVD. They, I mean, come on. Yeah, right. KVD. Got if you're into fishing, you know that exactly got mustad worm hooks so they're setting you up with the worm hooks monster bass has some of their own stuff so these are wide gap worm mm -hmm. hooks that work with those nice. um you got they're setting you up with like creature baits these are like a jig trailer or you can texas rig these as well and they set you up with a jig there's a monster bass jig for you that you can put that on nice. or you can put it on like these are it just says terminal tackle. I don't even know what they would call these ones, but it's like it's a it's a tungsten like Ned jig head, but it has like a wide gap hook on it. So these are a little bit unique, but you could fish this with that creature bait. You could fish this with these worms. You could fish pretty much everything you want. Yeah, nice. Setting you up with top water. There's a buzz bait. They got Damn. the bass popper. So we're we're covering all the different things. This is one of Monster Bass's own baits. Nice. Cool colors and stuff. Yeah. Rick Clun, uh, spinnerbait. Rick Clun is a famous fisherman. They hook you up with stickers. And then when I was talking about, you know, like baits that season fishermen, I don't have any stick baits like this that walk the dog. This thing nice. sits like this in the water. And when you fish it, explain it goes that for back the audio listener. Forth. It goes yeah, like so, vertical so from the sits, tail. It sits like vertical almost, like up and down. And when you start working it, it does the walk the dog type action, but it yeah. doesn't glide as far. It doesn't move as far. So it kind of stays put and stuff. Nice. So yeah, man. They they're covering all zones, and that's just one bag. Like that's the contents of what you would get in one bag. Yeah. And all that stuff is gonna cost you way more if you buy it individually at a store. So it's a great deal. Plus, they're setting you up with cool stuff. If you're a new fisherman, seasoned fisherman, get right. you some monster bass. Right. They're going to hook you up right. Yeah, for sure. That's really F.TV slash monster bass. They'll get you over to the monster bass website, but it'll let you know that we sent you from the Really F.TV podcast, and that'll get a little kickback for us. Help us out by going to really F.TV slash monster bass. And, of course, don't forget about Patreon.com patreon.com slash real AF TV. Remember real like fish and real where we are set up to have you come over and join the community. That is the real AF TV community, sort of a fisher community. You know, this combo community that we're trying. We think we have a unique perspective on fishing from me being a geeky person, Tim being the fisherman, but also Tim being into video games, me being in video games. Like you don't see a lot of that sort of, generational representation in fishing i think is that a weird way to put him no i like it 
okay. in adversity. Yeah. We are diverse generational gapping Fisher <laughs> geeks. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully that's what we're building. And if you go over to Real AF TV, you realaf.tv, you will see the link to the Patreon page. It'll bring you over there. That's the best way to support the Real AF TV podcast directly. And also the Real AF TV YouTube channel, of course, directly. We're trying to do more videos. We're doing a lot more videos. We got some videos content in the tank. And uh there's also the ability to get exclusive Patreon created content. If yep. you go over to patreon.com slash realaftv, you will see the different tiers that you can become a patron of yes and you know we will start creating exclusive content we'll say that's right yep so there it is the best way to support the podcast directly is realaf.tv find the patreon link right there on the home page click on that give us a couple bucks a month hey subscribe for one month hang out for yep. a minute check out what we already got on there and take off that'd be cool too but Perfect. don't forget, we're going to keep keeping the podcast free. So don't right. worry about it. Keeping the podcast free, the YouTube, if you could like and subscribe on any of those, that would also help us a great deal. But the Patreon is definitely the best way to go about it. That's right. Okay. How'd you like those ads? I hope they were great, but we're back <laughs> to talk, continue our conversation about Reels. Abu Garcia, specifically, we, were, we left off with the 100-year anniversary of a reel which was recent but the revo line is what we were talking about before that and it's complete revamp tim what else do you got because i have one big question oh I hit me wrap up to abu yeah hit I me with it because i i have so like i just love seeing all the new stuff orange is my favorite color yeah and the i think it's the revo x I can't remember. I don't know which Revo it is, but they make a silver and orange one. I'm just Dude. like, are you just trying to trick me into buying these? Like, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Yeah, probably. So yeah, dude, I just love how they're all so different looking too. Like they all look amazing. They look way different than the old ones, and just the colors on each one to be so much different to stand out so much i just love it yes but what did you have to say that's that's a perfect transition for i was going to ask you this is a revamp revo is a big line it's already out there yes budget fishing man are we gonna get these old are we gonna get these sweet reels from last year <laughs> on the clearance rack are they going I'm, to are these new revamps are they going to make it a drop are we going to be able to find some good ass deals i think so man yeah because honestly for me like dude this is one i don't even think i can do it, because you're just, gonna have to jump on the new shit yeah dude they're gonna be <laughs> like hey that old revo is like you know this much cheaper and i'm just like you know, I might I still the new go. one's coming. <laughs> like where I have a where I have a rod that I'm not in love with, but I'd like to have a second setup, you yeah, know? And they're yeah. just like, this old Revo's cheaper. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't need to put the nicest reel on that one. So sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. But man, oh dude, I I don't even know. If it's not that big of a discount, like obviously. If you're trying to save some money and you don't care if it's not just for, about looks for you, which most reels and rods shouldn't be, right? You know, uh, we yeah, already talked, talked about, about the that. That's we got with the pink ones, right? Like, yeah, get the pink it, ones. when I can get it thirty dollars yeah. cheaper than the blue one. Yeah. Also, I don't think the new ones are gonna get any cheaper because the lady ones are like better looking than <laughs> the old ones. They're like <laughs> now they're now kind of like a purplish, like a like a cool purple. Like they look yeah. dope. So. I don't know. Even still, like that's one of those where they're just like the purple ones are on sale. If you want those, like yeah, bro. I live in Minnesota. We get away right. with purple all day. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> For it's sure. like us, us in Baltimore. We can. <laughs> right, we can, we're like we the only two. Like Not, there's a there's a big male market for purple. <laughs> yeah, where nobody cares. It's just like yeah, we're purple, purple and gold, baby. 
And then Baltimore's like, purple and black or whatever. They wear, we're Ravens. Oh. <laughs> just shit never more. Him. Just okay. shit him for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> never more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, honestly, that one might, that's going to be real hard for me, but that's a great point. Keep an eye out if you want those revos and stuff i bet there will be a definitely discount when you get the new ones it happens with everything but for yeah, sure when it's a complete sure. revamp and the new ones look so damn good i think the <laughs> other ones will maybe not at first where they'll like give you a little bit of a discount and maybe mm-hmm. they won't sell that fast because everybody's like oh do do you see those new ones you know i think people are going to have a hard time especially when it's only like a 10 dollar difference Mm-hmm. The old one's ten dollars different, and just be like that new one is worth ten dollars more. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, for sure, for sure. So yeah, dude, I. That's all I got to say about the Revos. I got, I got nothing else on that aspect. Uh, we touched on all the baits when we're talking about reels and stuff. 13 yeah. fishing is doing some cool stuff. That's where I wanted to go. I got St. Croix on here too for oh yeah. One one thing. But it was okay. for a rod. Yeah. And so hit me, we get hit to me it. With it. Okay. Yeah. Let's just talk St. Croix. Okay. So uh, did you see the swim bait casting fish rod? Like that's yeah. Talking about that pistol grip, bro. <laughs> yeah. Dude. I know. I looked at it and I'm like, what the fuck was that? Pistol that, grip, man. I don't know. I've never used anything like that before. But I'm Shit guessing crazy. I'm guessing that it's something where like you're probably getting like relatively powerful strikes and when you're reeling it and stuff that some of these guys if they're fishing these big baits and they're getting these big bites that they might almost be coming and trying to pull the rod out of their hand. And the trigger is just not cutting it because, you know, the the bait caster has that little trigger. And then somebody had the idea of just like, well, you know, there's a trigger, right? And it's kind of like a gun. Why don't we give it a pistol grip? Yeah. Because when you're holding on to a gun, you don't hold on to the trigger. You hold on to the pistol grip. Right. And then they probably go, oh, hell yeah, you hold on to the pistol grip. And then that dude that I sent you with the crazy looking rods that are all custom and stuff. Oh yeah. He's yeah. like, why don't we make the rod like this net handle? Yeah. That, Cause there's a, there's a solo net handle that curves up like that. Or there's, I think there's like uh snow shovels that have that curve where oh, it kind of sits yeah. on your, yeah. If uh, you're from forearm. Up north, you know what that is. <laughs> yeah. So he's got a rod that sits on your forearm and then it curves up into your hand and goes down and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, that shit was not the crazy. most crazy. It's super crazy. Not the most innovative thing I've ever seen because I'm pretty sure it's a net. And he looked at it and just goes, oh, why don't I take that net idea and make it? Why don't I take that net and just make a rod out of it? But yeah, it was just crazy to see St. Croix, like a big fishing, make like a bait caster specific rod that you have to palm pistol grip style. Like, I don't know. It was pretty wild. I just was wondering if you've seen it. Yeah, I did. And I'm looking at that like this pistol grip, huh? And I almost got nervous to say anything on here because I'm like, I don't know if they're the first to do it. Am I late to the game? Like, I've never seen it before. Oh. And the first thing I saw, thought was what you thought was like, damn, full pistol grip. That's crazy. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I don't want to look like an idiot and be like, oh, pistol grip's brand new, bro. And then everybody's just like, that's been around for a while. But I don't think it has. I've, I've, I've been fishing for a long time and i've never seen that you know so if somebody yeah, else it doesn't had just it pop up and like it's not like you fish right. just big box stores it's not like you only get all your fishing shit from walmart it's like you yeah. hit up different spots so if it yeah. looks new to you it's probably new right yeah it's definitely not mainstream i've never seen that pistol grip i've seen add-on things, things that kind of worked sure. in the same idea you know where it's like there's a grip down there but it's not a pistol grip made into it by the manufacturer yeah 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 all right dude let's wrap this shit up with 13 because that was they put on a pretty good show too yeah yeah so 13 fishing is coming out with a bunch of new rod like lures and stuff too yeah but they're what was 13 what is 13 like what do they do because i actually have been a little bit I haven't done enough looking into 13. Like, have they always done rods, reels, and baits? Like, 
So no, they're a relatively new company. I think they started Generally in 05. Speaking. Holy shit. Yeah. So yeah. they're I knew they like, were newish, and that's why I think I don't know what the fuck they do. Yeah, I'm I I want to say that they started in like 2005 and I think for the most part like when they started it was really all about ice fishing. And I think they started really? coming out with their yeah, I think they started coming out with just a lot of ice fishing stuff. Interesting. And they had some nice ice fishing rods and stuff and then they started coming out with the reels for the ice fishing and um that's where they really you know gained a lot of traction with the sure. they had an ice fishing reel like uh I know one of them is called a Black Betty, and then there's like a couple of different, but they're like the inline style ice fishing reels, and I think mm-hmm. they're one of the first people to really start doing that. Okay. Maybe even the first. I don't know, because everybody, it was like just smaller versions of a regular fishing, like spinning reel. Right, right. Before that, and then they started coming out with these inline ones, and I don't know if they were the first, but they were definitely one of the first ones out there, and that's where they sure. started gaining a lot of traction. Sure. And then they started moving into all this different stuff. Like not too long ago, they started making bait caster reels and a lot of people started digging those and now they have everything. They run the gamut. They have yeah all the different rods for everything, all the different reels for everything. They're moving yeah. into, they're another one that claims that they have features and nicer components at mm. a lower price point. Like mm. they claim that they are at the top of each one of their categories. Mm. You know, like mm. when they're in like the $200 mark, they claim that theirs is superior to what they're offering you in that reel to the mm. next one. But I don't know, man, they all might say that shit. <laughs> so, right, right. Take it at yeah. face value, but just saying. <laughs> yep. But yeah, yeah, like yeah. another one, you know, talking about running the concepts, Brian Latimer um, is a professional bass fisherman. And they have this new top water bait that's called a power slide. And he's been fishing that for a long time on his lakes and stuff. Um, so it's cool to see them moving into like all these like legitimate bass. Cause I think they for the longest time were really just ice fishing oriented. And now it's a hundred percent like we have bass fishing lures, you know, yeah. top water, crankbaits, all yeah. sorts of stuff. It's and crazy. They're out of what, Florida, dude. Are they? Yeah. When I went to Florida, we like drove by it and I was going to try to go to him. But long story short is it the trip did not go very well for my family. And we just weren't able to go anywhere. Really? That's crazy. Because I, dude. Yeah, they're down near Orlando or and, Tampa. Down, now down near Tampa. So maybe they were making everything, but for some reason... Maybe that's why I think that the traction was really gaining for us well, up here. Maybe but that's also where they, saw, they probably saw a market in ice fishing and started there and just and that's for, that's you know probably I mean? how that they could that's, be what was going on there yeah, too. That's probably why I started seeing them the most in Minnesota was because we're all fishermen and we have our tried and true. And I think it's sometimes hard for a new company to, to in. come in here because yeah. we already have all these different ones that we trust. Right. right. But and they saw something coming in the ice fishing some, market and went yeah, for it, and it worked. started coming out with some new stuff because I, yeah. I knew for sure, like, uh, now it's different. But for sure, like, 10 years ago, I would see people with a 13 fishing hat on, mm-hmm. and I'd be like, ice fisherman, right? You ice fish? Ah. You know, like, I'd, like, connect on a fishing level. Like, I'd see the symbol, right. but I'd be like, you ice fish, right? Right. And they'd be like, yeah, because that's what kind that's of like synonymous. Interesting. That's crazy one, to hear. And one time I did, you know, like sometimes you're trying to, you know, connect with people. You see that one person, you're like, oh, 13 fishing, man. You ice, like trying to be like, where are you yeah. going? Like, where are they biting or whatever? Right. I go, right. 13 fishing, man. And he goes, I got this hat for free. I go, oh, okay. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, shit. Never mind then. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> that's great. So what's up with this power slide that you were talking about? Oh, dude, it's just a, it's just a, a top water bait. It's kind of got a weird like curve to it. Like the body almost like rotates. Like, uh, I have, a, a railing on my steps mm-hmm. that the metal kind of like, it's like a four sided mm-hmm. piece of metal. Mm-hmm. And then for decoration, they twisted it. That's what this yeah. top water bait does. So I don't know what it does. Weird. in the water i think it's like a glide bait but i don't know why it has that rotation and stuff huh. 
So that's a bit of an innovation, but um, yeah, to see them moving into, you know, they have frogs and yeah. other top water baits that that power slide is more like an open water one because it has the treble hooks hanging. So you can't be fishing that around lily pads and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. around lily pads. Mm -hmm. You can't through lily pads. You through li right. Good point. Good point. Um, but yeah, dude, they're just moving into a bunch of stuff. But the kids thing is dope. Yeah, that and it was sick because they had a whole bunch of stuff and it was really cool to see what they were doing. And like they had a lot of stuff, but I didn't just it didn't hit me as noteworthy. You know, I was like, OK, good, good. They're a good quality company. They're making good shit. And then all of a sudden I got to that video about the kids, the ambition. And I was like, hey, yeah. And the part that I love is like they already make stuff for kids you know mm. there there's mm -hmm. snoopy poles and all that other stuff we already hit but this one i'm reading this from what they say because i haven't really looked into it and stuff but it okay. says the passion okay. starts here bringing technology and capability tournament level gear to a platform that is manageable for a developing angler so they Damn, are bringing dude. like legitimate quality fishing gear to yeah. a smaller size yeah all i could think is like that yep. I want to get one for my nephew. I want to get one for my son. I want, yep. and it makes your day easier. That's another thing. Like if you're fishing right. a lot, when you buy quality gear, it doesn't give you as many problems and stuff. You have crappy yeah. line and crappy yeah. rods on those things. Right. The lines start getting twisted. I got a problem with my nephew's reel right now that every time he goes fishing, he opens the bale and the lines just like, <laughs> it just flies off. And then just, he's like getting tangled and then, we're all getting pissed because he's like, we got a knot again. And we're like, I just want to fish. I don't want to keep <laughs> fixing your knots. And it's like, then you're getting mad at him and you're like, I know it's not your fault. Right. Though, even, right. You know, like, but I'm getting mad at you just because it's happening to you. And it's like, yeah. I got to control that. And yeah. yeah. And, and I've been doing it's it so for so long that goodness. I'm getting grumpy because I know like these ways to get around it. I'm like, put your hand on the re like line when you open the bale and then like right. let it drop and then put your finger on the bale when it gets to the bottom. Well, he doesn't feel it like I feel it because he doesn't have the experience. So when the thing's right. getting to the bottom, he doesn't know when to stop it and stuff. And Right, exactly. You just want to be like, I, I know how to do this. How come you don't know how to do this? Because like, <laughs> well, he hasn't been doing it for 30 years or whatever. So Right, you know, right, like, right. Exactly. And but I'm when just you, so, so glad that that is how yeah. you see it. Because <laughs> yeah, that's the way just, I took it right away. Yeah, and just to get them quality. I mean, quality helps in every way there is. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. always just making it so you can be a better fisherman. It helps in all sorts of ways. Having oh, a yeah, reel dude. that properly puts the line on so you avoid the like line twists and stuff, because line twists is a real problem. Oh, yeah. If your line twists up like crazy, it starts doing yeah. all sorts of weird shit. Yeah. The way it goes through the eyelets on the rod and everything. It's it Yeah. it's. I mean, like, if for people that don't fish a lot and you don't know, think about your cell phone cord. When you right. get it, that thing's pristine. It goes in a straight line. You plug it into the wall. You plug it into the phone. It's fine. And then, like, yeah. later on, you unplug it and move it around so many damn times that it's just, like, this weird, like, twisted up thing. And then you got to kind of, like... <laughs> try to pull it straight so you can get a couple extra feet out of it from right, wherever right, you're sitting right. and stuff. So you can actually set it on the fucking table instead of having to hang yeah. it off the side of it. Like, Yeah. It's the yeah, same dude. thing with the fishing line, but think about having 150 yards of it and it's way thinner <laughs> and right. it's harder to see. It's not like a thick black line. It's clear and you're like, it's wrapped around itself and I can't right. tell where the hell it starts. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And we've yeah. talked about this on the podcast too. Is just like, as you get older, it's just like, Stuff that we were saying is like, you don't have to spend a million bucks, but like when you spend a, a little bit extra, you get a little bit extra and it almost, and it, and every single time it pays off, like you, you can either buy a bunch of cheap shit frequently, or you can spend, you know, that build up on something good in the first place. And that's how I see this. And dude. that's why I, right away I was like, dude. You're getting this for your yeah. kid, aren't you? Like your son's getting one of these things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know what I love? Like, so I never read this thing. And the funny part is, is like, I see these pictures and I see it's legit. And all, that's all I need. All I need is for you to say legit. But it, yeah. it like not only makes you feel good as an angler to have somebody else confirm what you're saying. But when you read it and you're just like, we just said that. 
It's so fun. It says, don't pull up short when getting your angler comp- angling companion something that they can enjoy alongside you. Enrich the experience by removing any frustrating tackle issues as whether it's the real seat, handle length, guides, or length of taper. Every part of this was built to give a young angler exper- exactly what they need. But to say, to yes. remove any frustrating tackle issues. Right. Like right. that's a, that's the only thing I, you know, it's that's just literally like, that's what, what you just said. <laughs> and that's why it's a genius piece of equipment to have because all these other yep. people are just like, it's just a kid. It doesn't need to be perfect. Like there's so much more to it. And clearly you guys are just marketing people that don't give a shit. Right. These guys were like, right. um, maybe we should just, and that's maybe not fair to say for these other guys either, but they're like, you know, maybe it's like a marketing thing alongside of like, who's going to pay for this. Right. right. I think quite a few people that actually like are out there every day and they want not even every day, but just want to have a better experience on the water, knowing that if they catch a fish, they're going to be able to land it, Right. you know, not having to try to tell them like, don't horse it in, like set the drag properly and don't, don't worry about it. Just let them do it because the drag's yeah. going to do the work for him if it's a legit reel, you know? Yeah. And for anybody and, who didn't, who's not like on, who's not going over to the Instagram to see what has been posted by us. Yeah. But like, yeah. Okay. Tim will post the ambition, you know, lo- video or whatever. And if you don't do it just to let you know, yes, of course you can go get the, you know, Snoopy reel and the, and or you know you can go get the Snoopy rod and reel combo thing and whatever, and your kid's gonna be happy because it's like cool. I have that character on there. The ambition line has the colors. It looks legit. It looks it looks cool. like a Snoopy rod. It looks like your setup, except for it has dope kid colors on it. Oh, for sure. It's like, like all... it doesn't have a Snoopy logo on it. It doesn't have Snoopy's face plastered on the side. You know to keep on the Snoopy thing. Yeah, but it fucking looks cool. It it's like some like a kid thing. Yeah, like I don't want to say about, toy. That's what I'm. That's what no, I kind of right. where I was going. But it's, it doesn't I, look like a fucking toy. But it's called yeah, it like I, one. I don't know. I think of it. I think of it like some dope kid kicks. You know? Yeah, dude, like the cool dude, colored yeah. shoes where they're just like, yeah, look at my shoes. I got all these colors. You know? Yeah, 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 it's yeah. like the same thing. And then you get them those shoes and that rod and reel to match. Watch out now. yeah dude and this this was supposed to be our transition into cartoons and and doing some dad talk about cartoons and shit like that which was supposed to be the random take but i knew and i had a hunch when we were getting into this that this was going to be a full eye cast episode and it's going to be that way we gotta wrap it up we've already done our two hours holy shit tim i'm <laughs> not surprised by any means like subscribe find us on youtube real af.tv remember real like fish and real remember real like fish and real real af.tv that'll take you over to our website that'll point you in every direction we're on instagram we're on twitter we're on youtube or all that stuff it'll shoot you over there don't forget patreon as well the best way to directly support the real af tv podcast and find the youtube channel with the like and subscribe come on we need those like and subscribe you know how it does that's just the rigmarole that is the rigmarole did i I forget anything did we miss anything from my cast i was i was just thinking about it and i want to say that gulp came out with like metallic colors too they did they did was it gulp yeah that's the only thing i was just thinking of like Yep. Sometimes no color. I got that note down too. Yeah. Gulp Chrome. I we did I said yeah. it earlier and then we skipped it. Okay. I just thought about that too. Like, you know, not trying to get back into anything. Sometimes new colors aren't that big of a deal. Sometimes you're excited because they're your colors, but Gulp Chrome when Gulp Chrome giving a little bit of flash. Bait fish have flash. You have flash to your baits, they just mimic say. a bait fish better. That's it. Boom. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Boom. What else do you need to Boom. say? <laughs> Mic drop. Berkeley. <laughs>